before we start the next yes. game, can I just say to you, like seriously, congratulations. You you've seriously done so well and it's amazing. You know, Thank like you. I re I remember watching your stream uh when you first started out and it's only because you have been consistently hard working, you know, because you love this game and because you you yourself have built an amazing community. You I'm know, not it, good it, at taking because compliments. It, it, it's because <laughs> of you, right? That you have been so successful and I, and you really deserve it, man. Like seriously. Thank you, man. So just congratulations you. to you, man. Thank you. I I uh, have a ton of respect for you as well. Um Zach is the reason I started commentary, by the way. I remember I'd get home from school and I would I would watch Zach commentate. You want to know the first video where I was like, damn, Zach is an amazing person. Do you want to know the video? I bet you remember it, Zach. Um, the, the Viper, <laughs> you'll remember it. The Viper versus Lori tree hop. Do you remember that? Oh, God, yes. Yes. yes and you had this that. five to ten minute thing. <laughs> oh, shit. We got a lame in game one. It's Zach. a lame. We got it's a lame. It's confirmed. <laughs> it's not hitting cup 12. It's hitting cup 10. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I remember you you having this five to ten minute thing where you, you were talking about how like you talking to your mom. That's how you say it. Mom. And how you were so like... Uh, you're you're Hello? basically preaching yeah. at us where saying how you need to prioritize family and loved ones and stuff. I remember that. I was like, man, Zach is a stand up uh, dude. So I don't remember that, but I do yeah. remember the game. So. <laughs> well, anyway, I appreciate I appreciate it, man. You're right. I, I have worked hard, uh, but I I do it because I love it, man, and I yeah. love the community I built. So we have a lame here from Hidden Cup Ten. We have new players. This is a best of five, and that was pretty quick, man. He didn't waste any time laming. No, the no Aztecs. hesitation. Yeah. Whew. And it's a non-mirror, because uh, Hidden Cup 7 is playing Malay here. Yep. Interesting choice, since there are some great water maps. Like, we saw Malay on Land of Lakes before. Actually an amazing civilization for that map. And now it's gone on Arabia. Yes. Where I think the Aztecs probably, or should be, at least dominant. Yeah, we've seen a lot of players go for Mayans in Game 1s. We've now seen Aztecs. Malay is a really weird pick for me in game Who's one. Whose home map is this? This is this is game one, which is always a Oh, map. my bad. Yeah, okay. So okay. it's really peculiar that you choose Malay. I'm not saying it's a bad civilization. I'm not saying they can't win with Malay here. But I feel like there are civilizations which are normally preferred over the, the Malay Civ. But anyway, I'm going to start with the maps. Zach, I'm going to talk about Hidden Cup 7's map, and then you can touch on Hidden Cup sure. 10's, 10's map. <clears throat> um... You know, this is quite a decent map for the early game for Blue. He has that main gold and that stone behind this gigantic wood line. You know, as long as Red doesn't have any towers or ranged units behind there, that could be quite good. However, as time goes on, this massive hill on the front is going to be insane. I mean, it's been a long time since I've seen an Arabia map like this. Jesus, so many hills. There's golds up there. There's stones up there. So that aspect will be tough. This is super nice. I like this. It, it's cool because it's like it's wallable, but it's not safe. Yeah. Which is like the perfect sort of level of wallable, in my opinion. Like, don't you just hate it when you're playing against someone and they have to wall like three tiny little yep. gaps in their wood line? They're completely <laughs> closed. It's like, God damn you. Yeah. <laughs> it's the worst. Lucky. <laughs> but there is a Deserve theme, this. though, with those maps. Like, when you can wall up an early feudal and have a really safe feudal, that generally means you're close to the edge of the map. And yeah. that means you're going to have your second and third resources <coughs> forward. That's um, true. Hills, that can always be different. But th there is a theme where if you can wall up an early game, you can take an early game advantage, but it's harder for you later on. So I do like that because you're right. Occasionally, there are maps where players can wall up. But at least then if you're red, you can see the golds and see the hills and say, okay, I can pressure that and take that away from him. Yeah, for sure. And, and right now, we can actually see that uh, Hidden Cup... Uh, f seven, the blue player, is yeah. actually having to push the deer now because his uh, ball was stolen. So he's taking the time to push the deer. That means no scouting, and he's probably anticipating the drush. Um, now, as far as like players are concerned, uh, I'd probably consider Red to be more of an old school player than a new school player. Um, so I'm counting out Leary. I'm counting out MBL actually, yeah. um, because Aztecs in AOC times, uh, AOC days were like number one. Uh, Civ for Arabia, and mm -hmm. 
their really standard solid choice for this map. Nowadays, things change a little bit, but you know it, they might feel comfortable with the classic Civ on the classic map. Yeah, I. so I was thinking when the lane was coming in that MBL probably played in the last set. This is our guess, of course. We don't know. And I was thinking, who lames a lot? And I immediately thought, okay, he's chosen red, which which Yo and Vivi actually do kind of frequently. I mean, it's impossible to know, but just, just a thought. And he lamed early with Aztecs. And Mr. Yo has played this game for years and years and years. And Aztecs was always the sure pick on Arabia. So, I mean, I... <laughs> that's not definitive at all but maybe no. maybe just putting a planting a seed in the viewers minds we have oh what here. is he doing though what the hell? come on <laughs> come on he even knew where the tc was surely oh, oh wow okay well red for glorious china that's what what we have here uh oh, well God. the five militia rush is happening and yeah. why you know blue should definitely expect this um there's no question that it's coming um, but he's still a little bit open, actually, and I think they'll slip by and hit that berry patch right there. If this is Viper, we'll see like 20 gates right here. Nope, just houses. Not Viper, confirmed. Can't be. Can't be. Nope. But pushing them in toward the TC, and the Drush so far has done nothing. And I, this is what I mean, like, Blue has got this very easily wallable map, but just because it's wallable doesn't mean that it's safe. And that's kind of like the nice balance that I, I'm appreciating about this at the moment. Yeah. Um... What's weird though is Blue hit Feudal Age, and he doesn't have a barracks. Yeah, so he's, he's not been in Feudal Age, <laughs> and he has not. He started to build the barracks. Okay, oh, it's maybe, Viper. Maybe it is Viper. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's, he's gonna walled, tower them. It's, it's a wall. It's walled them in. Yeah. Right. I mean, this is. But it's a diagonal oh, gate. Oh, of course. It's a They're diagonal out, gate. Of course. Oh, it's a known bug in this game. Yeah, I know. I mean, I these know. guys are pro players. You should know <laughs> that a partially built diagonal gate actually has a hole in it. Oh my goodness. I can't believe that. Oh, uh, so this has just been a still... mess, bro. He still has over 400 wood. Still yeah. hasn't made a barracks. <laughs> so, wow. the Malay advanced so fast to Feudal Age that they oftentimes have these awkward stages. And when I played the 1v1 challenge with Doubt, um... At one point, he or I got Malay. I tried to forget that series because it was embarrassing. But anyway, he said, Malay are a fantastic Civ, one of the best, but you have to survive the awkwardness of the early ages. So early Feudal Age, awkward. Early Castle Age, awkward. If you survive that, it can be very good. And right now, I mean, this, is not, but, this has not been good for Blue. This has been awkward. No, it, it has been. But wouldn't you think that, like... You can still play pretty standard with melee, you just make two more villages in the Dark Age and you'll reach Feudal at like a 22 pop up timing and you'll have two extra villages. So I don't <coughs> see why they have to be awkward, you know? Well, it's... Even if you go... I mean, this is just from my experience playing and it could be because I'm doing something wrong, but it, it just feels different, Zach. Like, I don't know the numbers yeah. on the amount of resources you bring in in the time, but it definitely feels like you have less. Uh, and I, look at this. He's so nice open. move from Hidden Cup 10. Oh! <laughs> oh, man. And then he threw it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, he had two of the man at arms attacking the other piece of wall. Jeez, we haven't looked at Red's base at all. He's making archers behind this. This is a very good start for him. Yeah. Goodness. This is very good. The, the onslaught now. Yeah. I mean, yes, I, I know exactly what you mean. I mean, you, your timing will still be. Uh, yeah. you, can be similar, but the amount of resources that you've gathered is not. So I think that's where you get thrown. Um, so yeah, I completely agree. And yep. I mean, it, it's definitely, like you say, being awkward. Yeah, has been awkward. On the bright side for Blue, he did invest in a lot of farms early. So his eco will start catching up now a bit. Uh, and he has a beautiful map to defend from this, honestly. On m many other maps, if you have a hill like this, you, you're dead already because your wood line's there or your gold is there. But he has a safe stone. He has a safe gold. Mm -hmm. He might need to leave his berries, but it might not be the end of the world. He has skirms for the enemy archers. This is still doable for him. Yeah, I, I think he maybe needs to think about counter-attacking, but I think that's going to be tough because Red has walled up quite yeah. nicely and he's got an outpost in the area where he's open. Yeah. Uh, I guess the issue is as well, like, um, you know, there's these men at arms still alive. If he'd have completed the trap and killed the men at arms, yeah. he'd probably be feeling a little more comfortable with his skirmishes, but at the moment, 
he can't really push into these too easily either because a they're on a hill and b there's still the man at arms there to tank the skirms and obviously hindsight is 2020 but if you think back to that diagonal gate did he need that because he was already funneling those units in towards his town center anyway so true i don't think he even needed the gate but if anything it might have alerted red that he was going to be trapped and red kills a villager and look at the amount of archers he has with full upgrades I mean, this is domination right here. I mean, it's not even, it's not even close right now. No, it's not. <laughs> Wait, this is really one-sided, and I'm yeah. surprised. I'm shocked at how one-sided it is. Um, but you know, the thing is, I mean, Blue picked Malay, so yeah, it's not like they were sort of blindsided by a, an unfamiliar sieve or something that they didn't really want or plan for. For sure, man. This is pretty. It's it's funny because. We don't know. This could be Viper in the blue. We have no clue who it is. Like, someone probably prepared yeah. and had a strategy in mind. I mean, I don't think it's Viper, but... Uh, <laughs> no, me neither, it could but... Be. It, it could it be, could. you know? I'm still convinced. I mean, I could be wrong at, at the end of this tournament, and it could be Viper number one or Leary number one, but I think this tournament is going to have some upsets. I think the winner of this tournament will be someone we haven't seen win tournaments recently just because of the lack of preparation and how different it can be but we'll find out the sunday afternoon <laughs> yeah we'll find we'll out. find out in the end yep so uh just want to point out how good the aztecs are and farming i mean he's had wheelbarrow a little while and he's got less farms than blue but he's yep. managed to gather an extra 500 food already so that's the Aztecs for you. Uh, yeah. Not only that, but he's also going for archers here, and he's gathered more food. So we're going to see the Castle Age coming in for Red literally right now. Beautiful job from Red. When your opponent's full walled like this, it's oftentimes a good idea to just make them idle their villagers. And you can see that happening now, forcing Blue to build a tower. Blue lost a few vills there. I'm sure Red lost a few archers, but I think that's worth it to, to force the idle time. But this is where Malay can kind of come back, right? They're behind to Castle Age. However, Blue's folding a bit of gold. He has a market. Will he buy some food and click up right behind Red? It's possible, man. Yeah, and if he does click up now, he'll probably reach the Castle Age at about the same time. Yeah. Uh, it's this 80% faster upgrade. Uh, right now, I mean, Red's probably wanna, gonna want to keep his army clear of those scums. Does not want to get caught out by those before the Castle Age comes in, at least. Yeah. So he'll try and get out there, but it looks like Blue will get a couple of picks on the way out. But look at the difference in military, man. It's like two to one at the moment for Red. And the Castle Age is coming in faster, so... We should expect to see, although Red running back now, we should expect to see a pretty big um, push out from Red very soon. Yeah, and you're spot on, Zach. You don't want to trade numbers right now. Wait for your upgrades. Blue is coming up behind now with the Castle Age upgrade, and there's only going to be a 40-second difference, so he might be able to hold. We have a sneak villager from Red, and I'm certain he wants to build the Siege Workshop on that hill. Uh, we'll see if Blue can spot that as he chases yeah. down the archers. It has to be. He doesn't have enough wood income for, for uh, well, a second or third TC, I guess. I mean, yeah. he's surely going all in aggression here. And there's the Castle Age upgrade. We'll see Crossbow Bodkin. We'll see the blue player immediately running back. Is that a new Eagle Scout? I think it is. It is. We're seeing a couple more of those coming out as well, which is a solid choice. As Hidden Cup 7 to scale barding armor and that many farms means one thing. It's going to be oh. elephants. They're, they're <laughs> elephants that will probably be two-shotted in all honesty with this many crossbows out but he's hoping yep. he can go elephants and skirms and he does see the siege workshop on the front from red but he can't do anything to deny that he's losing crossbow numbers the hidden cup 10 the early lame high aggression in feudal age and now high aggression in castle age i'm really liking his play yep and that first battle elephant is out. Only plus one defense, no bloodlines. And like you say, probably going to get two-shotted by these crossbows. Yep. Uh, Monastery as well from Hidden Cup 10 because he sees the stable. So he's reacting with that. That's nice. So we're going to see this siege um, monk push with crossbows and maybe even some extra eagles for added potency. And I, I think this is just going to be so good with this hill. He's got everything right now. If blue can somehow trade evenly here and hold... Look at his resources. This he could, could build a one. castle soon. Oh, man, those crossbows. There's just so many of them. The elephants yeah. really don't stand a chance, but the skirmisher is getting a little bit of time. 
Oh, and Hidden Cup 10 made a ram instead of a manganelle, so he can't use the manganelle to pressure the skirms around. Yeah, uh, though wow. the numbers are working well for him anyway, with the sheer numbers of crossbows that he has. Oh man, it looks like that's stable. It, it's gonna totally stay, gonna stay, stay up, up because these yeah. elephants, man. You gotta delete that elephant now if you're Hidden Cup uh -oh, 7. Yeah. Rip. And he gets it, so he's paying attention. Meanwhile, at the back, some crossbows, just two crossbows, just Ooh. being annoying on the wood line. Yep. That's good stuff, and me this is where Mesosips can uh. really shine, because you have the monks, you then have the eagle warriors. What don't you have here? And these I know, skirmishers right? are just lost. They do not know where to go, man. Way too outnumbered to be able to take a fight, and I mean, Red's just bullying the uh, blue player around, and okay, it's great. He has got some resources in the back, but he's yeah. running out of space. Castle coming up for blue. That's yeah, going to be think he needs the to last it. thing to hold on with now, yeah. So... He'll lose the front of his base. That wood line is denied for now. The left side is somewhat protected, but I think Red just needs to scout that. And if he scouts that, he could range all the wood and stone there. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, at the moment, he's not been over there. But, I mean, it makes sense that he would go around there eventually. But, uh, yeah, the castle should come up. And that's going to at least delay things a little bit. But I, I think, you know, that castle, it doesn't, for example, save the TC if Red yeah. was to come in from the right side. Yeah. So, or even from the front, it might not even save it. So it's going to be tough. However, where you look at this now, the castle just is, in my opinion, delaying the inevitable, which is Hidden Cup 7 going out of this game. I'm thinking the same thing, but look at the economies. Yeah, true. Look, look at Red's base. He's 1 TC, and Blue has more villagers, 2 TCs, and this back area, he could even place a third. He could boom behind this. As you said, I mean, he's losing a few fills in the front now. He's losing houses. But, you know, he's he's snuck in here with a few skirmishers. He's picked off a few crossbows. This could work. It's not going to be easy. But can he hold out here? I, I really love Red's play style, actually. I just love it. I, I just love this aggression. Like, this yeah. is how I would play if I was good enough. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know? Like, he, just a, a double, another barracks coming up, Eagle Warrior coming in, and, like, he's got all the answers right now. He's got every answer to, to everything that uh, Hidden Cup 7 wants to throw at him. Guys, we just spoiled it. Uh, Zach was actually playing in this event and since day one and day two of recorded games he's casting himself right now way to go Zach. yeah that's me right there <laughs> <laughs> look at me go <laughs> so the crossbows are the biggest issue now for hidden cup seven with one or two oh, maganel shots just for the stream the crossbows, in the north yeah. in the north he's gonna lose the scum it's mm -hmm. going down <laughs> there, there we go is. perfect man now or every time or i cast it? an <laughs> oh Oh, he's got. Oh, what? Oh, Are you way. kidding me? Oh, rip. <laughs> Come Rich on, man. A dream. I was going to say, must be MBL because he always. Anytime I'm watching him play, he loses Vils to Wolves, but I uh, guess it's not him. But uh, back to my point for a second. You, know, you see Blue making a lot of Karambit Warriors. So, as he saves his Maganel, with these two Maganels, if he kills the crossbows, he can destroy Aztecs with full Karambit spam, even in Castle Age. Very but true. Red has research redemption, Zach, and he has the hill with monks. Oof. He has everything at the moment. Yeah, he does. <laughs> I mean, even, like, let's be honest. Even if Blue wants to kill these uh, crossbows, he's going to be facing three v two mangonels and yeah. uphill. Yep. So it's not like you can one shot these mangonels anymore. It, it, as long as Red's paying attention, and if you were Red in this position, I think you're probably paying like a lot of attention to your military right now. Yeah. You know, you're really focusing on this. Um, he shouldn't slip up. But let's see, the Krambits are pushing forward. That Manganel on the left is a little exposed. Oh, and the monk conversion is denied. There will be another one. Oh, he gets one. Oh, wow. Can can Blue get a good trade with this Manganel before it dies? Oh, he doesn't even kill the monk. He hit him on the head. Oh. He didn't even kill him. Uh-oh. That's bad news. Oh, Those Krambits God. going down. All the mangonels gone. And I think Can that's... he get more karambits here? I mean, to be honest, they it wasn't great well. for Blue, but he's going to kill that final mangonel, and there's not a lot of crossbows left. Maybe he could push out with more karambits. Maybe. Well, I I think Hidden Cup Ten traded too well there. You know, like yeah, he yeah. took out every single one of those karambit warriors, and he's still got a healthy number of crossbows alive. But yeah, you're right. He did take down another one of the mangonels yeah. so now it's 1v1 again instead of 3v3 but and 
the monks mm -hmm. are also I mean needs to make more monks. You're you're right. Red is I mean his fights just looking at the KD kind of deceiving, right? His fights have definitely been better. He's been in more control. And Blue's been looking for an opportunity to branch out a little bit. Okay, I like this. Ooh, uh, the oh, back and shot there. Mango. Yeah, man. Well, I wanted to say I like the fact that our red player here has actually not neglected to add the second and third TC. Yeah. So economically now, he might start even pulling ahead as Blue yep. cannot get out to build the TC in the north. Oh, the Karambits run uphill again. They will kill another Maganel. And that's about it, though. And I just don't know if these trades are good enough for Blue. And that Manganel was so converted, huge. by the way. So ah. was, he killed his own Manganel in, in, technically. <laughs> yeah, and he loses another one now. Karambit Warriors in Castle Age, obviously not near as strong. How are the upgrades? They're actually... Okay, they've got plus two defense. That's yeah. important, but... No, uh, no second attack upgrade, which is uh, it's fine. But look at the villager difference, man. Seventy-eight vills to eighty right now, and Red has found the left side. He's sitting there with the crossbow, ranging the stone, Ooh. and well, the stone's all gone, but yeah. he will be able to arrange the uh, wood line as well. And he's coming forward for a forward castle. Now we'll know if the castle goes up. This is not doubt, guys. And I think that castle will go up. Now Blue, he's branched out to the right hand side. If he uses the market, he could build his own castle, but this is not the place to place it. Maybe you place it on the right to protect that area. He can't stop this from going up. No, I think it's too late. I mean, well, Red's only building it with five villagers, so it could be doubt. Um, yeah. But yeah, <laughs> I think he's fairly confident that Blue is just not going to have enough military to stop it. We'll see. Yeah. He's got more Karambits on the left side. But uh, yeah, I don't think he can stop the castle right now. And that's going to be in range of the TC. So it's three TCs apiece, but Blue will be losing a lot of farming space. And that TC will go down soon as well. So it's a little bit a little bit worrying for yeah. our Blue player. Has well, been worrying think, for a while. Yeah, I think Blue needs to build a castle on the right because Red just scouted that. Wouldn't surprise me to see him buy 200 stone right now and build the castle on the right-hand side because Red will obviously focus on that area next. You cannot allow that to happen. He's trying to do some counter raiding, by the way. He's got a couple of Karambits in the back of Red's base. <laughs> um, they just do so little damage, though. Yeah. You know, a single eagle can clean that up, and he's heading over there now. So that's going to be that, and some more Karambits heading across. But, you know, he can't ignore this castle on the hill. He can't yep. ignore the fact that he's losing his base here. And whoever this blue player is, he is doing an excellent job of scouting despite being pinned back into his base. He's running in with a few groups. But Zach, Hidden Cup 10 is on the way to the Imperial Age. And with the forward castle, he can tread down anything that Hidden Cup 7 has. And I don't think that blue can respond to this if red's in the Imperial Age. What does he do? Well, I think he alt f4s at that point <laughs> yeah to be completely honest there's nothing he can do yeah uh, red will have the hill as well so his trep will take down his castle much faster and i mean yeah it's just at this point i mean blue's losing manganels to the castle there it's getting sloppy and yeah. he's just struggling to, to hold it together right now there's too much pressure coming in uh, red's compositions have been brilliant he's adding the eagles when he needs the eagles he's adding the crossbows when he needs the crossbows his micro has been pretty good as well he's keeping an eye on these crossbows as blue has skirmishers and magnell and look at that magnell micro Jaggy was coming out love it <laughs> yeah it has to be a win now he's just adding the jags for style points <laughs> pretty much i mean i i expect that red will uh get the win as soon as the Imperial Age upgrade comes through. He's continuing to build forward siege workshops, so Capped Ram will be following up pretty soon as well. Yep. And yeah, I mean, at the moment, I mean, what can Blue possibly do now apart from continue to counter-attack, counter-raid, and hope to do some damage, but I don't think he's doing enough. No, he's not doing enough, and he's not doing enough in a Castle Age fight. He's still losing in the Castle Age, and the Imperial Age hits now. Will Blue stick it out, or will he give up game one with 88 food in the bank? It uh, could tell us a lot about who Blue is if he yes. continues to play on here. I would predict a Chinese player if he <laughs> plays on. Like it could be, it yeah. could be Vivi. Yeah. I mean, you never know. Yep. Although it doesn't look like Vivi, but still, second castle from Red and Blue's hanging in there, hanging in with what I don't know. Uh, he thinks, I guess, as long as he can make Karambits, there's still hope, but that Treb is out. Oh, look at that seat. Look at that. I mean, 
With the amount of gold he has, you might as well try. Look at the Siege Workshop. He has a ton of battering rams there. So he's going to oh, try damn. and push yeah, this. Yeah, that's coming out. Yeah, Krambits. The problem is now it's it's Arbs and Jags for Hidden Cup 10. Jaguar Warriors rarely have use for Aztecs, but they're excellent here. They do, um, just let me do the quick math real quick. They do 22 damage versus these Karambits. Which have 30 That's like, Yeah, <laughs> which have 30 HP. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, how do you think that one's gonna go? <laughs> yeah, not gonna work out, but I'm, I'm okay with him trying this, and yeah, now he calls the GG. <laughs> and I, a single, here we go, a single G from his oh, top 10. Oh, oh! A single G. This is the first time. So is That's it Yo? Is it Vivi? That has to be Yo or Vivi. Or I think I think it's Yo. Or it could Maybe be not. literally anyone else, and they're just doing <laughs> <Yeah>. that <laughs> to make us think that they're Chinese. So. That's that's a that's probably the best tell of the day right there, but it could still be a trick. It could still be a trick. <laughs> All right. Well. All right. Well, I'm preliminary, preliminarily putting Yo as Hidden Cup 10. Um, we need to see how the next games go to get some more tells, some more clues, perhaps. Someone said, was that like 100 million percent Yo? 100 million percent, not just 100 percent. Okay, there's the KD for you. Whoever Hidden Cup 10 was, that was incredible. Immediate yeah. lame, great unit composition, great awareness. It was... It was amazing. It was probably one of the best games in terms of uh, technical skill and decision making we've seen today. Uh, we are going to move into game two in a moment, guys. Let's go back to the format. So for those that might be wondering who that could be, you can look. <laughs> um, I'm going to update the score. You know, the so sad thing is, do... like, sorry, sorry to interrupt, Zach. The sad thing is nobody's been guessing like Riot or Miguel or Slam because there's this is kind of a popularity contest in a way. People, they're always going to think of certain players first. So, who knows, man? Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, I'm wondering if we'll see gates coming out from like Viper and Slam, and it'll make it really obvious. Because yeah, I think I don't think that Viper would be able to change his habits in a sense. Like he, his go-to is a gate, right? It's a quick wall. Yeah, I don't think he would be able to in the moment think oh no i don't need to i shouldn't make gates it'll give me away you're right man i think he'll do it anyway you're right i i don't think players might try and change their maybe their styles and their build potentially like if you think it'll be obvious you're vivi or yo you might not uh go forward i don't know but players are going to stick to their gameplay for sure especially when there's so much unknown i think they have to stick mm. to their roots or oh sorry for the phone there <laughs> yeah absolutely Damn, right. i agree <laughs> <laughs> so um uh, yes they are called slam gates but viper utilizes them much more yeah, lately at nowadays least. yep so uh things have changed since the user patch introduced spinning gates so we have game two here this is the home map pick for uh hidden cup seven and we have Arabia. Yeah. So Aztecs for Hidden Cup 7. We just lost against Aztecs. And then we have uh, Incas for Hidden Cup 10. So we're getting a lot of Mezzo Sivs, which means a lot of lames. And already you see Hidden Cup 10, maybe Yo, pushing <laughs> forward with the Eagle Warrior. And there's plenty of force forward for Blue. As is Hidden Cup 7 as well, by the way. Uh, ah. He sent his eagle to the left side, though, yeah. and uh, didn't get lucky. But he will, if he keeps in this sort of direction, maybe find the ball from Hidden Cup 10 as well. Hidden yep. Cup 10, he's going to see the ball. Yep. No questions. This is just like last game, man. Like, Im immediately, boar on the front, mine. Yep. Even better as well is that the boar was attacking up. Well, never mind. I was saying it was attacking uphill, so that was good for him. But then he yeah. just stood still and took an extra <laughs> two hits. So, <laughs> oh, and he's oh, no, you can't go through there. I think Come he on. can, but the boar <laughs> might glitch out. Oh, the boar's glitched yep. out. The boar's glitched <laughs> out. Oh, my God. And now Blue Rip. is stealing his boar. This is hilarious. Wow. Justice reigns from above. Uh, all right, there you go. Uh, Hidden Cup 7, going to get the boar steel going, and 10's going to try and head him off. We'll see if he can block it. Oh, oh, he's coming in. It's possible. It is? 
It when you oh. have an eagle blocking another eagle, it's actually quite easy to kill that thing off. You just have to get in front. Look at this running back and forth in front of the boar. Uh, blue is running back and forth to stay within the boar's line of sight, and I think that Got red it, just gives up. Wow. Well, Hidden Cup Seven's gonna be feeling happy about that, given the last game. And uh, now it's gonna be our red player, Hidden Cup Ten, who has to deal with being a boar short. Yeah. And this time, you know, the, the shoe is on the other foot. Hidden Cup Seven has the Aztecs. However, Incas. Uh, very, very solid all-round sieve, in my opinion. Incas arguably better than Aztecs in some ways uh, because yeah. of the inclusion of the slinger, I think. You mean the free llama. And and the free I, llama. Let's not, for... <laughs> <laughs> Let's not forget about the llama. Don't want to disappoint any anyone out there who loves their Inca llamas. But yes, but no, the llama right. can the be slinger. helpful too. Yep. Yeah. Let's talk about the slinger. It's a unit which doesn't get enough love, I think. Yeah, it's going to be interesting because I think with the inclusion of the Slinger here, you probably won't see the Aztec player go into as many Eagles. Because if he goes into a lot of Eagles, the Inca player can make Slingers, which will counter those Eagles. So we might see them play like AOC meta, where you're going with Militia into Archers. Um, and Aztec Wars or Meza Wars have always been very interesting to me because oftentimes you'd start out with the uh, infantry with like militia or man at arms, go into archers, and then in the Imperial Age, it's an immediate switch back into infantry with eagles. But I, who knows what they will do this time around with the new civs? Yeah, of course. I, I just I do like the Incas. Of course, the the Aztecs do have the better economy. Yeah. Um, when you consider all things, so getting ahead economically should be something that Aztecs are capable of doing. But of course, I mean, that all comes down in the end to, to raiding and you know, how much eco damage you take or give. So let's look at the maps. Uh, Red's map here. Look at that gold way at the way at the north. His Must woodline in the back. <laughs> yeah. You map know what? Hacks are on. The guy doesn't have three back gold, so it can't be Viper. Never mind. True. Take Two of back. them are forward. Yeah. In fact, in fact, this is quite an interesting map. I mean, you have a lot of forward gold. Sort of yeah. across the center of the map, you just follow the gold. It's like join the dots and you get to the enemy. You know what's even more interesting? Red hasn't scouted that gold. <laughs> Whoa. He doesn't know it's there, push man. Deer. He's pushing deer. He does know his other sheep are there. He's actually down four sheep for a while because of the, the aggressive timing with the lame. So he should find them if blue doesn't. But he doesn't know his gold is there. And, and blue scouted red's main gold before red did. You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> That's crazy. I mean... The, the blue player needs to be going for aggression, but yeah. he's not doing a drush. He's not doing men at arms. Oh, I mean, he could do three militia and men at arms with I, the extra I gold think, he gets, but. Yeah, I think he'll. He's not. Let's see if he drops off food and queues up militia. Maybe. He should have done it already. If he's planning to do militia, like, he should have already dropped the food. Yeah, it's possible, man. I'm just really curious what on but earth is, is Red going to okay. do for gold? All right, I was wrong. I, I really thought he would have dropped the food sooner and started queuing the militia as early as possible, but he's going to do it a little later instead. So man at arms and towers, very, very strong for both of these civs. However, arguably better for Incas. Um, does Red, is he just gambling and, and hoping the gold's back there? He I sees guess, it. <laughs> yeah, he sees it now. I guess if there was no main gold, he could just, it would be a bugged map and then they would go back. So he just assumed. And he found it, and he's walling up, Zach. He's walling up. Yeah, no, I, I, I suggested last game that maybe Hidden Cup 7 was Vivi. Um, this time, he's coming forward. And, yeah. okay, it's not completely out of the question that another player would do this, but it could be another hint that 7 is potentially Vivi if yeah. he comes forward here. Um, and look at the stone positions of Hidden Cup 10. That is it, nasty. It is god-awful. Honestly, having oh. that back gold is not worth it when you have the... Other two forward golds and stones. That is just an yeah. awful map for. What a beautiful tower, 10. actually. Yeah. Look how beautiful that tower is. It's on the berries, it's out of sight, and it covers both stone mines. And it's wow. against the wood line, so he can wall it in with like two palisades. Oh. And because Red's eagle is weaker, he has not been scouting the front of his base because Blue's eagle's been there, and Blue has more HP. So Red is. He just doesn't have the scouting info to know this is coming. Though I will say he's adding ranges, which is good. I'm glad he didn't go for militia. And that gold is still safe, so we'll see if he can push this back. Man at arms from Hidden Cup 7 are not going to be able to get in because of all the walls. Yeah, unless they bust the wall down, but um, it seems like 
red should be close enough to wall up behind it with a house or a gate if it was another player, but it's a house. Yep. So, um, yeah, the first tower is on the money. The second tower needs to probably come up in front of these ranges here yep. to try and pressure the farms and do damage. But is that looks like he's going over to the right side to support his militia, men at arms, Ooh. sorry, on breaking through the wall. Uh, this is a dangerous game he's playing because red has archers now. So yep. you, you got to get the tower up. He should be okay. able to to force it down here, and Red goes for a counter tower, which is really interesting because again, he does not have access to stone for more. I love how they were both debating each other there yeah. <laughs> with that tower. Yeah, right. Red's gonna is he gonna complete it? Oh man, he's gonna complete it. Oh, that's they, that's you know, probably an accident around. as well. I, I believe that those villagers just finished the house and are going to the next yes. thing, which is the tower. But I think so too. This is a lot of archers. He could just rush this down with the archers and the villas anyway. Oh wow, well, the quick he's walls. Not. He's not. He can't. There's there's too many men at arms. Early game strength of the man at arms paying off for Hidden Cup 7, and this is a much yeah. better start for him. He got the lame this time. And also he has the forward pressure. This is just like red last game. This feels like Vivi versus Yo. This feels like China mm. versus China, but it's also it how you play Mesosivs, so kinda hard True. to say. <laughs> you know, I, I really want to give credit to Hidden Cup 7 here. Like, he's walling up his towers, he's playing really sensible, but also the, the debate on the right side, putting the tower there on the right, yeah. meant that Hidden Cup 10 built his only tower yep. on the, the right. But Hidden Cup 7 wanted the tower on the archery ranges and the farms anyway, like we said before. Yep. So this is a huge win for him, I think, and now he's even pressuring the, the ranges with the men-at-arms. I would love to see Red go for what I call China-style where you delete a hole in your wall, run out the side, plug the gap, and he's doing that right now. He's going to counter Blue, who's probably thinking that he's safe because he doesn't see any military running forward. Though Blue at this level might expect it. He needs to be prepared with some defensive towers, which he's doing, and maybe some skirms, which he's also doing. Great job. Yeah, he's on the ball, man. Like, that tower on the left side near the mill, that's so good. And then the one on the uh, wood at the back, it, yeah. it's great. Uh, the right side's kind of closed off as well, so the mm -hmm. archers might not be able to do much. And meanwhile, you know, he's not exactly doing a huge amount of damage to his opponent right now. It's more of a stationary annoyance than anything. No villagers yeah. are dying. But back at home, things should be pretty smooth for him. I don't know. I mean, he doesn't have many farms at the moment, so kind of worried that he could be falling behind there if yeah. he overcommits the stone collection. Yeah, this is possible, because that stone's not really doing much for him right now. And he also invested, well, I guess it's, yeah, 250 stone into to two defensive towers. Uh, does have map control that he can live with, though, so if he's later to the castle age, he'll probably still be happy about the map control. He, he's being extremely annoying on the front as well with these man-at-arms, trying to kill the archery ranges. I don't know if you've been seeing this. <laughs> yeah, being just a nu nuisance. Yeah. And actually, I, I was totally wrong, you know? Uh, another thing that I, I missed, Hidden Cup 7 took all the deer on the front. Yeah. He took his own deer at home, and he's actually gathered seven, 800 even, 800 additional food for the blue player right now. Yeah, well, Skirm's coming over, and that's needed. Red did the right thing, went immediately underneath this tower. But once the skirms arrive, he'll have to leave, so he'll take shots from the skirms and from the tower when he departs. Uh, I, I feel like, I don't know, I'm just really curious as to how Red will play this, because when you see enemy skirms, you want to make eagles, right? But he'll always have in the back of his mind that, uh, well, actually, I'm sorry, Red is the one who can make the slingers. So Blue might want to make eagles, but he'll have in the back of his mind that, as slingers are a potential for his opponent. Yeah, that's very true. Um, I do wonder, like, I mean, he can just commit to doing archers and go crossbow manganels. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, similar to last game, really, just pressure with that. Uh, because even manganels would do pretty well against slingers as well. So yep. I think you can't really go too wrong with manganels. Uh, yeah. Unless your opponent is making eagles. In that case, things get a little tricky. But... I think Blue will be faster to the Castle Age. Oh, no, he might not be, in fact. I think he, he might drop a market, and if he drops the market, he for sure will. 
But yeah, but he's doing wheelbarrow right now, so oh. he's actually going to be ready to click up first. Oh, I didn't realize that he's just now researching a wheel. That's pretty late, if you ask me. This must be Hart. <laughs> Hart's <laughs> not playing. <laughs> Hart's not in this event, but Hart always skips wheelbarrow, so I had to had to say that. I actually don't know if Red has wheelbarrow. Let me check. I'll have a look. Yeah, if you could do that for me. Uh, no, he doesn't. He skipped wheelbarrow, ah, so... Okay. Well, Blue Blue still has forward villagers. He's cleaned up a ton of archers, and he's building another tower. Definitely wants to ensure that his opponent will have to buy all stone. And but... Red's sneaking out on the right side. <laughs> this this <laughs> feels so China-ish to me, man. This feels like a Vivi vs. Yo show match. Forward Vils going off into no man's land. Where are they going? And, like, so many blue units heading in that direction, and I think they're just immediately going to be spotted, right? Did he? That Eagle Warrior must have spotted something. I don't think he did. Or maybe oh. maybe he saw something else, but he sees the villagers now. These will be Inca villagers for skirms, so they will have a, a little bit of tankiness to them. Yeah, they could just fight. <laughs> they could just fight. They've got an extra pierce armor. Blue has to click up the castle. There we go. He clicks up, and he's adding a a bunch of barracks, so I guess he'll go for eagles. These villagers, I, I honestly don't know what the plan was. Like, what were they going to accomplish going forward? It doesn't make any sense to me. Huh. No, I um, me neither. I'm not, I'm not sure. <laughs> I mean, maybe he was thinking he could make some barracks and try and raid, like, uncontested, but he's now making barracks in the back of his base and doing yeah. the eagle warrior tech, so it will be eagles from our red player. Our yeah. blue player also going for eagles as well, so... They are going to end up mirroring each other here, and that's when the Incas could come in with the Slingers, like yes. we spoke about already. So yeah. this could turn around in favor of Red here. Now, well, let's keep in mind that these towers are going up on the front, and there's three of them right now, probably four. But you know what, Red? You know, hitting the Castle Age faster has the Eagle Warriors. He could stop this tower from going up. He also had a counter tower to kill the other one. You're right. Yeah. I, I think if the Slingers can make it out without running into tower fire, sure. They could definitely sure, uh, turn this around. I agree. Whoa, look at him. Look at his gold collection at the back. I mean, that is saturated. <laughs> he needs a seed workshop as well, because that's yep. more gold than, you know, you need for two barracks at this point. So he's got to be planning to make a seed workshop next, I think. Um, no way to have that much on gold otherwise. Um, Monk's probably out of the question, as his yeah. opponent will be going eagles as well. And then, I mean, for now, he's doing a great job of cleaning this up with his own eagles. But that possibility to transition into slingers as well, oh, that's so huge. And he just traded versus all the skirms. Blue lost all of his skirms. If Blue kept his skirms alive, he could maybe then use them versus slingers. He can't do that now. So he's going to push this back. And Blue was definitely the player to take the initiative early on in this game. But he definitely didn't execute in... Well, just getting to Castle Age fast enough, in all honesty. He's super slow. And now there's only one tower remaining. He's lost Vils on the front. And here comes Red. Yep, and he's going to spot those blue ones uh, coming across the map. He himself is just going to push straight out. Plus two defense coming in. So focus here on raiding for the red player. While our blue player is doing the plus one attack. Which means that he's probably focused more on, on aggression. Uh, sorry, fighting toe-to-toe -to -toe against his yeah. opponent rather than raiding. But um, yeah, we're actually going to see the fourth barracks coming up. So scrap the whole idea of making a siege workshop here. Uh, it's going to be the barracks, the fourth one. And uh, Red now getting ready to raid. And Red, no slingers yet. A blue trying to finish the tower next to the ranges of Red. I think he'll finish this because he has all of his numbers forward. Yeah. If Red can't do any damage with this counter attack, this will be seen as a huge waste to leave his base. And a fifth barracks for Red now. So Wow. Um, <laughs> this is all in, basically. Yeah. At one TC, uh, as many eagles as you can muster. As uh, blue player has actually added a second town center, so maybe a little greed, but yeah. um, we'll see if he can hold on there. As the raiding will probably start to ramp up a little bit as the fifth barracks comes in. I mean, that TC is just crucial. If that was an open wood line, all those villagers would go down. The tower would not be there to protect. So that's a wasted journey for those eagles from red. And oh, a big fight on the front here. And you know what? Red has more numbers. He has more upgrades. So, Zach, as you said, Red opting for a little bit less eco. He's adding another barracks now. <laughs> no. It's number six. 
goodness uh, he, gracious. He doesn't have enough food for this. Um, he's only got 10 farms. His TC is idle right now. Yeah. Like, this is about as all in as you can get at this point, I think. It kind of makes sense, though, because he doesn't have the golds on the front, so... To add economy now would be kind of risky when you haven't secured the front. And Blue's TCing that gold with those forward yeah. bills. Isn't that something? <laughs> That's nice. I like yeah. that. Uh, what are the numbers looking like? I mean, we got seven more eagles on the field for the red player, but Blue now has the upgrade advantage. Yeah. And he's taking better fights as well, actually. Yep. Better fight in the center, better fight on the left. Yeah, he's going to reinforce it. And the one on the left will, will go his way as well. Uh, one in the center, I guess, is rather even. But, yeah, that's right. You know, there's a three villager difference now. Blue did invest into a forward town center, which might be a mistake. Let's see if Red can push this back. He's adding another barracks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven. barracks now. Oh, How goodness. has he got the food to make all these eagles? He doesn't. Like, his he barracks doesn't. are actually idling. They're idle, so. yeah. Like, he doesn't have the eco to support that many barracks. But what he could do is a siege workshop and yeah. then push this CC back. It's, it's funny because he's probably like, oh, I don't have enough eagles. Let's add another barracks. Well, you're not creating out of all the ones you already have, bro. <laughs> yeah, uh, exactly. Yep. I mean, he doesn't have stone for a second TC right now. He could try and get the stone on the left, but big fight here. That's oh. got to look good for red. Numbers should work out in his favor there. Yeah, blue does have forging, and there's no slingers here. I'm still surprised that red hasn't invested into a few of them. But yeah, red has the numbers, and... Hey, maybe if this goes if this goes right for him, he could kill the TC, kill the Vils. He's uh, 11 Vils behind now, 9 Vils behind, actually, but still think there's a chance, but it gets more and more difficult, doesn't it? And he's still fighting with the upgrade disadvantage as well, so even though he's got the numbers advantage here, yeah. and he'll take the win, he does not trade effectively. Look at this, the military count now looking very even, in fact. Yeah. When... They went into that with Red having many more numbers on his side. Hey, Zach. Siege Workshop. How does it make you feel? There it is. <laughs> I, I feel like it's, you know, five minutes too late, but I yeah. feel, I feel <laughs> glad that he's doing it at least. <laughs> I guess it is tough to to use battering rams or maganels if your opponent has eagles, but yeah. all Blue needs to do now is control these golds. It's fairly obvious. He has more eco. The score's looking good for him, so as a player, he'll, he'll know that he probably is in this situation. Yeah, I think Red's lost the game here. I think this is it. I think he will lose this fight, yeah. and because Blue will keep reinforcing, and then I think, he, yeah, there it is. The single G. This Again, the single G. Wow. And the win. The so, Cup 7. the single G. That's twice in a row now. The players are not chatting in-game, so we don't truly know. We can't look at their personality in any other way. So Is it Tim playing on someone else's account? <laughs> Just Dude. for even more confusion. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the funny thing is, I think Vivi and Yo normally say G. I yeah, mean, GG. I, so. I, I think they normally say GG. Like, Yo, oh, really? I okay. see him say G, so... Mm. Who else says G? Not a lot of the players we have here. I think it's mind games, bro. Maybe. I think it's... I think somebody... One of the players is watching the stream right now, laughing his ass off. It's, yeah. it's probably he's, he's loving it. Yeah, it, he's like, "Oh man, they think I'm Chinese because of the G." That's that's funny. Well, <laughs> it is all tied up, and this has probably been more competitive than the previous best of fives. These games have been pretty close, pretty aggressive. Both games have featured lames and mezzo sieves, so now players cannot reuse the sieves that they have picked, and we're going to move on to Hidden Cup 10's home map. Uh, which perhaps could give us another tell as to who they are. Absolutely. I mean, Hidden Cup 7 there wins with Aztecs. Yes. Keep in mind now that that's a 100% win rate for Aztecs on, yep. Ar on Arabia. Um, solid, solid sieve. And brings it back. But it was a, another game that started with a lame again. Crazy, man. And let's the player... look at the... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say, let's look at the, the KD. I mean, Red having all those barracks didn't pay off at all. 70 kills for Blue. 58 units lost. Cool stuff. Yeah, absolutely. I, and it really, I think in the end, it came down to the fact that he didn't have forging. Yeah. That was costing him so much. And it was the food, wasn't it? Because he didn't have the farms, right? So that, that too. And I don't yeah. think he had wheelbarrow for those farms either. And uh, oh, that's against yeah. Aztecs farming this is true, man. with wheelbarrow. This is so. true. 
All right. So. I think if he had gone slingers, he would have been fine. Dude, I don't know because slingers are so slow. Mm, and that's at this level, blue would just run away. Right? But. I think I would have tried for sure. It's certainly better than investing into three or four more barracks. Maybe you stay four barracks eagles and two ranged slingers. It saves you so much wood. You can add farms. I uh, guess it's impossible to say for sure. Yeah, absolutely. It is hard because, yeah. I mean, the food cost is higher as well, I think. so. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm a bit disappointed we didn't see them, but we can make arguments why or why not all day. Can't replay it. Uh, Pasty99, thank you very much for the six months. He said, been ages since I last caught your stream. It's nice to catch it again and see what's up. Thank you, Pasty, for the continued support, though, man. Good to have you back. Uh, Sizok, thank you for the prime. Mad Mike, thank you for two months. Thor's hair, I will keep it up, man. Thank you for five. Uh, Angry Frenchman, thank you for the new sub. Ninja, thank you for gifting all the subs. Spikeosaurus, thank you. Ninja? The Ailey. real ninja. The real ninja, not the oh my not the Canadian one. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> yeah, if it was the if it was the real ninja, man, we're esports boys. We did it. <laughs> yeah, that's it. We made it. We made it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you everybody for the support. Uh, so just a reminder on a few of the things, because these things continue to be brought up in chat, and it's slightly triggering, but I understand because people are joining every minute. Uh, Today and tomorrow are recorded games, so these games were played within the last few weeks. In order to pack as many games into the day as possible, we had to do recorded games. The final day will be the semifinals and the finals, and that will all be live. So, for example, I'm online on Vubly, and I see a few of the participants are online playing. Uh, obviously, that does not exclude them from being one of these players that we're casting right now because Friday and Saturdays are wrecks. Uh Geez, what else did I want to say? Oh, I should probably show you the maps before we begin. This is really important because hidden cup or hidden user number 10 can choose one of these maps next. So we have Cross, El Dorado, Baltic, and it'd be no Arabia, Land of Lakes, Gold Rush, Bedouins, Golden Island, Chaos Pit, and Scandi. If we see yeah. Land of Lakes again, <laughs> I'm just going to lose it. <laughs> I know, right? I mean, that would be so crazy. I, I would never expect to see it. Yeah. Um, you know, often like it's there as like a wild card, I guess. But oh boy, uh, we'll see what they pick because again, like we said, we we're kind of thinking right now that ten is potentially Mister Yo. Um, Chaos Pit. But you think? Yeah, Yo is. I'm think if it's Chaos Pit, I'm gonna I'm gonna say Yo because okay. he. I forget what events. I think T90 series. He was so good on Chaos Pit. Um, yeah, he's obviously good he's experienced at kind of with it. But then again, you don't have Aztecs, which is one of the sure picks for Chaos Pit. So, well, let's see. Yeah, let's We're see. In. It is. Oh, it's crossed. All right. Oh, I can't complain about that at all. <laughs> no, solid map. Solid map. Indeed. All right, guys. So, welcome to game number three. This is the best of five qualifier in the Hidden Cup between Hidden Cup 7 and Hidden Cup 10. Um, we have gathered that player number 10 might be Chinese because he's saying G instead of GG, but it could be mind games from someone else. We truly won't know until Saturday afternoon. But he's playing as the Huns here, which is a great cross sieve. And then we have Italians for Hidden Cup 7 who had a solid victory last time around and tied it up 1-1. to -one. With me is Zero Empires, Zach. These games have been sick today, man. They've been really good. Yeah, really enjoyable. Also, not knowing who is who or what is what, because yeah. it, it's it's something fun to guess about while we're watching. Yep. It's like looking for these minor details that could give something away, but then you never know if it's a bait. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, we're, we're constantly left guessing. We're, we're in the dark as well. And, uh, I mean, that's, that's exciting. So yeah. you mentioned that Hunts are a great sieve for this map. Um, and the other great sieve, of course, is the Italians. And yes. we have that coming in for Hidden Cup 7. Yeah, the pawns are so important on this map. It's one of the best maps that this tournament will feature, I think, because it combines the water and the land. And maps like Baltic, that's mainly just water. Maps like Arabia, that's mainly just land. But this combines the two. And these are two saves that are versatile in that way because Italians, they have the, the discount on their ships so they can fish boom hard. Uh, Huns, they have the wood discount on not having to build any houses. And they also have a pretty fluid tech tree. They can do an awful lot. 
Yep, and uh, we actually see that neither player is going forward for a lane this time. So mm -hmm. maybe that's behind us now that the Mezzo Sibs are uh, done and dusted. Yeah. Although we haven't seen Mayans yet, so maybe that will come back later. But uh, yeah, we see for now, I, I imagine the... I mean, what do you think? Do you think the Huns are going to try and be more aggressive on land and just like try and focus on scouts and doing like land aggression and, and getting a lot of pressure on land or do you think they're still going to try and go for the three pawns because i think the way you win this map is by having three pawns while your opponent only has one unless you're me in the usa cup feels bad yeah, i did man. watch that game oh god i don't want to bring it up i don't even know why i mentioned it i suddenly I was, got... I was gonna mention it and i thought no i'm not gonna do that i'm not gonna mention it <laughs> i, I got mean, really you, guilty you you're like oh yeah you know, if you get three pawns you should win and i i oh man i just feel bad about it. but but anyway <laughs> uh anyway uh to answer your question i think that the huns player will probably be the first to advance to feudal age there's two styles you could go for you can go for you know the fish and then you can go scouts and try and get map control and control the pawns um or as red is leaving blue sheep there which is interesting mm. you could go for a lot of walls and i mean early walls happy happy timing walls and fish boom which is normally what you do as Italians here, but I don't know if you can wall this all that easily. With that Neither said. of them can, actually. I, yeah. I like this generation because it's not easily wallable for either player. Sometimes yeah. you do get quite easily wallable maps here, depending on where your TC's location is. Yeah. Um, but this one seems pretty open for both. I, I quite like that. Yeah. Sometimes you just want to wall off to protect your pond as well, not even your whole base. And there's potential for that for red, if he walls between the wood lines on the right and then to the cliff. But it's not going to be easy, that's for sure. So we'll find out soon enough. I do like that sometimes the players are positioned differently. So you never know going into a cross game exactly mm -hmm. where those pawns are going to be. And you can't stick to any one strategy. I mean, I'd say they are positioned differently to each other in this one as well. It's not exactly mirrored yeah. because our red players kind of equal distance to both of the ponds whereas blue clearly has a back pond and then a pond which is much further away so this could work out quite well for the red player uh he knows that the pond on the right has already been taken and that blue will have to expand to the pond in the south and that could be an opportunity for him to pick a villager or something yeah and both players going immediately to the ponds to find out hidden cup has found where blue has docked while blue went to the wrong pond. So very good point, Zach. Normally, I think that red's TC would be closer to the pond blue scouted. It'd be m more symmetrical, as you mentioned, but that's not the case. They both cook up the feudal age really early. Yeah, well, I think you're right, though, because obviously Hun's going up a little faster here. Um, pretty quick timing for him. And I, I actually really like both of their docks as well. Uh, yeah. Look how great those fish are. They're just just in like, range of the dock, so they don't really have to travel very far. That's really nice and efficient. Yeah, and Red is opting for a wall that will not protect his pond. Uh, Blue Scout sees that Blue might go back for this once he hits Feudal Age if he has the time and gets the extra attack, pick off that bill. Absolutely, and we'll see right now. Um, Red goes for the stable and just tries to harass on land. I don't think Blue will be able to close this up too fully in that time. Uh, currently, like you say, kind of walling up the north side a little bit, but he's still going to be open like on his back wood line, for example. Yeah. Yeah, everyone's going to be a bit open. This scout fight's going to be so important. Look at that. That's what a faster feudal time can give you. It can give you a lead in the scout fight, and if both are going scouts, and I'm pretty sure they are, it's important to have every bit of HP. And that's just getting your build order right. Just seconds Ooh. in that. And well played from Red to know the TC is there. Oh, he's yeah. running the wrong way. Woo! He juked it out quite nicely, actually, as well. <laughs> that was really good. I mean, fortunately, Blue didn't have many villas near the TC, but look at the difference here. He's only got one villager building the stable. Oh, that's wow. a huge problem. And you should have maybe... three or, or two at least. But I mean, he's yeah. all the villas there chopping stragglers, right? I mean, it's not like they're Jeez. bringing in resources all that efficiently. But look at Blue. Look at Blue with this villager, and look at Red patrolling with that spearman. Whoever this red player is, it's a smart player. He knows that this could potentially come in. Will he spot the Ville? Yes, he's on it. He is on it. Nice. Surely. And he's patrolling as well, so he immediately attacks. And then he, if he sends one scout over there, unless this guy can somehow wall the, the villager in, the Ville's dead. Well played from Hidden Cup 10. 
Yeah, that was super nice. And uh, that's it. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's one build down. And now you, your stable was up later. And the Huns, of course, faster working stable as well. So yeah. it's going to be difficult to keep up to the Huns in scout production, especially when you add all of those factors together. So a Hun player here, off to a well, fantastic start. And he's even got the fish advantage now as well. Saving all that wood. Not having to chop so many straggler trees. Yep. It all adds up. I think that being Huns in Castle Age is so much better here as well. Uh, because if you're going to go heavy on water, you're heavy on wood. And if you're attacking ponds, you're heavy on wood and gold because you have fires. Then you can make the Hun Cab Archers with the same thing. Wood and gold. So you don't need to mm -hmm. emphasize food or anything. So it really can work out nicely. Or if you want to go Knights, of course, you can because of the the food the fish is bringing in. Whereas Italians are a bit slower. They have their unique unit, Genoese Crossbow, but it's not a mobile unit. So they're just playing right into the Hun's strengths, I would say. Yeah, I agree. And, and right now you see the difference in scouts as well. It's six scouts versus four. And uh, our blue player has added a lot of spearmen, actually. There's three spearmen in the wood line, a spearman on the berries. Yeah. Um, you know, he, he's really worried about the scouts, and he should be. And the fish difference is alarming. Blue has four fishing ships versus the nine from Hidden Cup 10, and he's actually docked that uh, west side there. So quite strong play from Hidden Cup 10, who perhaps struggled last game without his boar. This game, he's done quite well. He's done very well. And uh, I think if you've got this many fish as well, I mean, you can probably keep adding some scouts, aren't you? Yep. He's up to nine right now, and uh, I imagine... He'll follow this up with a range in just a second. But, I mean, yeah, I mean, this is... Oh, he's... Whoa. It's not a range, T90. It's another a stable. Stable. Yeah, so m my logic is both... My logic earlier makes sense, but it's also flawed. <laughs> because you're getting so much food from the fish that it might make sense to go knights here. Uh, I'm surprised he's made so many scouts without moving them out. Might feel like... He wants to complete his walls first, but Blue is definitely behind here, and Blue can click up to Castle Age a bit earlier, so perhaps that's one advantage we haven't mentioned that Italians have in this matchup. We'll see. That's true, but you know, like, Red has so many fish, but he also has so many farms as well, so his yeah. food economy is so good right now. He's clicked up to Castle, and uh, Hidden Cup 7 will click up in just a moment, but he's short on gold right now, which means that he's going to be a little bit behind to Castle as well. And uh, this is just all adding up to mean that, well, Hidden Cup 10 is getting a very large advantage very quickly here. And Red is also protecting that southern pond. Uh, to Hidden Cup 7 credit, he's not going to that pond because he knows that he has no map control. That's a lot of freaking spears he's coming forward with right now. Uh, did not expect to see so many forward spears, I have to say, but a red can, of course, avoid that. He doesn't need to fight this. He's fully walled. He is, and he's got a third stable coming up. I wonder if Hidden Cup 7 will see that. I think he will actually spot that behind the wall there. So that's huge, really valuable information for him. He now knows red is basically going to be kind of all in, yeah. going into three stable knights. Now... What's interesting, of course, as well, is that Red did this last game and the game before. Yeah. In all three games so far, he's played this kind of 1TC style. Now, he could add a second TC here. It's not out of the question. But I almost expect to see him do something crazy and add a, a monastery or something, just because he can. <laughs> oh, Red's adding the archer range. So he might start with knights and then go into cav archers. He's not happy to see so many spears. Though he does fight them now. Uh, for blue... It's not the end of the world to take this engagement and lose it. You're just trying to trade. And he trades okay, I'd say, but not great. Well, I mean, he didn't have... Well, he had spears, but sorry, Red had a lot of spears as well. So yeah. it wasn't like a definitive advantage there. And now we're seeing husbandry coming through. We're seeing a market. And, well, he doesn't have enough gold to actually sustain three stable production. But the knights are coming forward as well. Yeah, I think that Red is going to have a lot of map control here. Blue is accepted. He's he's just spear defense now, and especially once a few cav archers come out from Red. Uh, this is going to be trouble for Blue. I, I don't know if he can lock down his base, but he'll probably opt for more TCs earlier and hope he can weather the storm. He did um, 
try that strategy in game one though and it didn't really work out too yeah. well for him this is interesting though blue's putting down a defensive monastery he saw this three stables right he's thinking yep. okay it's gonna be three stables well how many knights is red produced right now three four yeah there's not really many more being queued up well, uh, okay, never mind. He is queuing more. I thought maybe he was gonna. Tri I thought maybe he was gonna do like a big debate and add three more right ranges and just do all cav archers. But looks like he's doing a bit of a mix. He doesn't need to add too many more farms right now, so he'll have a lot of wood to spare. But he's opting for TCs. I think that if Red loses this game, it's because he forgets about land economy, and he's not doing that, which is nice. He has a, a great position with map control, forcing Blue with all these villagers to wall behind. And Blue is going to be upset to see the Cav Archers, man, because the Cav Archers really change things. They do. I, I think Blue is really falling behind here quite yeah. rapidly, actually. Um, you know, he's not got the second pond. He doesn't have a second TC. Red's going to be even adding a third TC in a moment. Like you say, I mean, he does have the wood surplus building now. And it's just, yeah, it's a downward spiral, I think, for Blue. Unless he can take a great fight and stabilize and sort of catch up in military count, it's going to be super tough. The only way Blue can win from this position, in my opinion, is if he's already been on stone. If he had a third TC on stone, and he had maybe 300, 400 stone in the bank, then potentially he could keep his walls up, build a castle on the front, and go Genoese crossbow and pikes and imp. But that's not his situation. He's, he's not even close to having a castle. In fact, his second TC is just now going up, so he's falling behind in vil counts, he's behind in fish and military. Every single stat <laughs> is not yep. looking good for Hidden Cup. It's really not, and in fact, our red player did add the extra ranges, as I, I expected. Yeah. He's going into cav archers now more heavily, which I think is a smart play to make as well, especially since, you know, his opponent's fully walled. Cav archers can shoot over the walls at least as well, so... Um, yeah, I, I think at the moment, you're right, Blue kind of needs the Genoese crossbow, perhaps. That's one thing that does perform very well versus the Huns, you know? It counters the heavy cavalry, it counters the cavalry archer in a way. Um, obviously the cav archer has the speed, so it can always hit and run and, you know, use the maneuverability. But the Genoese crossbow at least has the bonus attack and can be used as sort of like a more stationary defense. Yeah, uh, At the moment, though, it's tough. That's the one thing, is the Genoese crossbow, and... Oh, wait, what? Did I miss something? Is there a hole here? How did... In the south. Oh, oh, okay, he, he got through there. That scared me, actually. <laughs> and then Red <laughs> just ran through the gate as well. And is he gonna get to the monks? Are you kidding me? He's gonna get to the monks? Oh, wow. He'll kill both monks. Oh, my God. That was just more harassment done. This is... He, he did lose two knights to conversions, but still, yeah. I mean, losing the two monks as well, like, forcing up that TC really quickly. He's taking stone now. I think he's realizing, like, hey, I need that castle because this aggression is not going to stop. But I worry that, you know, Hidden Cup 7 is going to be in a similar position to the first game where he has no map control. Now, look on the left pond. Yeah. He has managed to sneak. Yeah. That's good. That's good. It'll actually put him slightly ahead in the fish count, but Red's had fishing ships for much longer. Now, Red has also spotted this, so maybe he can hold out and defend a little bit. Um, I'll give you a stat. Um, Red has gathered 2,000 more food this game so far. Crazy. He has a lot more farms, too. He has more farms. Let's see the farmers. Hidden Cup 7 has two farmers. Hidden Cup 10 <laughs> wow. has 22 farmers. So there's a huge difference with food income right now. Economy is so bad for Blue at the moment. I mean, he's 3,000 wood behind gathered, and he's yeah. 1,000 gold behind gathered. And now Everything. the cab archers are in. And that stone is so exposed. I think, now I get the logic to build your TC next to the wood, because normally you want it next to the wood uh, if you had to choose between wood and gold or wood and stone, but that stone is so important to him. And he's making a siege workshop when cab archers are involved. Not ideal, to say the least. No, I mean, obviously the mangonel, it, it does do good damage, yeah. but that cab archers with bloodlines. It doesn't one-shot them. Yep. And if, if we're talking about 1,600 players, it's like, yeah, that Maganel is a great decision because Red won't yeah. be able to micro, but we're we're talking about one of the top 10 players in the world, most likely. So and he's played really well. He's making sure he leaves this gap open, and he's probably well aware that he has a big lead because of all the map control. So I don't think he's too concerned, and he'll probably look towards the Imperial Age now, honestly. 
I think this is one of those situations where Red has to make some catastrophic mistakes in yes. order for uh, Blue to, to come back. Like, it's, I don't think there's really much that Blue can do in this position to come back unless it's Red making the errors. The only thing was if he had maybe 20 Genoese crossbow and he could start pushing out across. He just purchased 400 stone. <laughs> he just Whoa. purchased 400 stone. And oh god, this might be doubt. He's going for a forward castle, and he sees Red's Cav Archers there. Oh, not gonna boy. happen, is it? No. Not gonna happen. It's alright, he you bailed. Cannot, That's not doubt. You can't build a castle outside of your walls when you have no map control. That's suicide. Yeah. Well, <laughs> he also lost villagers on the stone. Which I guess he doesn't really need now. Oh god. <laughs> Here he goes. Well, he's gonna get the castle up. The somehow Magnus. Red can't see that. That's kind of funny. Oh, he might see it now as he comes forward. He's gonna out micro the mangonels and nice yeah. splits. Good stuff. Good micro. He'll kill the mangonels. He'll kill the monks. And he's on his way to the imperial age. Blue isn't even close. Blue will get the castle, but he's probably not gonna get the game, Zach. I I hate to call it early, no. as you and I both said, but Blue just he lost everywhere. He lost on land. He lost on water. He lost with Eco. Absolutely. And, I mean, that castle is, is there, but it's too late, I think. You know, he's got two Genoese crossbow out. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> Imperial Age will come through, and then what? You know, yeah, he's going to be surrounded. Yeah, I, I think he's hoping that Red made some catastrophic errors with his Eco. And that with his TCs and with his fish that he's just gained, he'll be ahead. But... Oh boy, is he wrong. Yeah, he's, he'd be <laughs> way wrong there. <laughs> yeah, this Cav Archer's just stationed around his base, just, you know, doing so much harassment, forcing yep. him back into the TCs. You know, he's got 16 idols right now, and they could force a lot more idle time as well. Imperial Age for Red. Now, he doesn't have a castle, so he can't just trep the castle from blue down, but, well. There's the G. <laughs> yeah, there's the G. There, there's the G. So we have the third G from Hidden Cup 10. And, and let's be honest, that was a game. There's no denying that. Yeah, it, it was but wasn't a game. It a good one? It was either good or it was a game. <laughs> uh, <laughs> good that probably, I won or, or just game because it was. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was probably the, the worst game out of the three so far. Uh, the first two games were very close. This game was a comfortable victory for Hidden Cup 10. And he just needs one more victory, and he will move on to play tomorrow. Uh, the, the next two games, though, will be from the map pack. So it gets really interesting now. Players have chosen civilizations knowing what the map will be. Now they will not know what the map will be until we get into the game. And they have to pick civs accordingly. Yes. Um, which is where we will see Mongols, Indians, Malians, in my opinion. <laughs> Those big three. Maybe the um, as sorry, not the Aztecs, the Mayans as well. It's kind of cool that they got the Mesosivs out of the way for the most part, right? Mayans is still a solid pick on most of these maps, as you said. We will find out soon enough. There's the KD for you, but it does that doesn't matter. This is what matters. The economy. More food, more wood, more gold was not even close. Hidden Cup 10 looking very good. Um, perhaps Yo, yeah. perhaps Vivi, perhaps Riot just trolling us with the G. You know, we don't know. <laughs> Maybe. I think that was the most one-sided game of the day, though. There's no question about that um, from very early on. Yeah, definitely. And Hidden Cup 10 then has been more consistent. That's what it's all about. I'm just going to waste no time yeah. here. I think we're going to move into the next match. And that's a great way to put it, actually. He has been very consistent. Yeah. Did we do a vote yet? No. I'll be uh, right back, by the way. Okay, so that's fine. So we're going to start the next match. It's too late for me to do a vote, but after this, I'm going to let you guys vote on who you think these players are. You guys have a lot of guesses in the Twitch chat. I'm going to do a, a whole Twitch vote on that next. Uh, but we're going to get right into the game. Zach said he will be right back. Yo, back. Oh, <laughs> cool. Uh, Lernal, thank you for the Prime Man. Chosen all, thank you for 13 months. Welcome back, Ray. Thank you for the brand new sub. Everybody, thank you, thank you, thank you for all the love today. Let's get into the game and oh Your game crash? Uh my game did not crash. Okay, I'll rejoin the game. Rejoin? Okay. <laughs> we have Baltic. So we had no clue what we were gonna get here. We have Baltic, and we have Hidden Cup 10 in the red playing as the Mayans. And we have Malay for Hidden Cup 7. 
Hidden Cup Seven. You, um, you, Malians. I was gonna say I was I was like I looked away I was like didn't he pick Malay? <laughs> I was getting confused, but yeah, he's Malians. Malay Malians. Yeah, man. On the overlay, I just see M A L and yes, sometimes... I make that mistake all the time. Yeah. I don't look at the I'm unique to, unit there. Yeah, I'm trying to get used to looking at the unit because then you can't make the mistake. Yeah. But uh, when it's Malay, it's M-L-A. M-A-L-A, sorry, yeah, not M-A-L. Yeah, well, but I, I, I make to, that mistake all the time. I think time, we just man. need to delete one of these civs so it's not confusing <laughs> for us. <laughs> yep, that's true. Uh, but Malians and Mayans, like I said, there was the four big civs, I think, yeah, that were yep. remaining, really. And those, again, two of those civs that really just work well. Um, in this one, who would you favor, actually? M Malian's obviously 15% less wood cost on buildings. Yeah. Huge for a water map. And Mayan's 15% longer lasting resources. Oh, it's so tough. I I think in the early game, Malian's, because they save wood on everything they built. Uh, late game, Mayan's. And late game, Mayan's because their resources last longer. Late game, Mayan's because they get Bracer and Malian's do not. So... Mm. All of that will make it tough for Malians, I guess. Uh, but, you know, the layout of the map is also interesting, Zach, because I would change my answer if there was more open space for Malians to use their mobility. There's not a lot of open space here if the choke points are walled up, which they could easily be done by both players on the left and the right. Yeah, that's true. Um, but I think that's, you know, that's usually the case with Baltic anyway. And uh, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Red just can't help himself, can he? Look <laughs> at this. He sees a villager, I have to lame it. <laughs> he came forward early, man. He went the long yeah. way around. That was... That's some dedication to the lame right there. <laughs> really is. And I mean, if he'd gone the right side, he wouldn't have found a boar anyway. It's kind of fortunate for Hidden Cup 7. Both were at yeah. the back, which is nice. But I mean, he's denying the house. Uh, yeah. That's that's something, I guess. <laughs> well, um, compare yeah. the dock he times, dude. That. Compare the dock times. Hidden oh, Cup 10 true. already has his dock going up. That villager was going to finish the house and then finish and then the dock. Up. Yeah, and then he had to build a house next to the wood because that villager was delayed. Then send a new villa out for the dock. So, I mean, that that's big. Um, and now Hidden Cup 10 is running back to his base to maybe push some deer. So I'd say damage done there. Yeah, I would agree. I, I didn't... Well, when I said he didn't deny the dock, that is true, but he certainly yeah. delayed it. So... Yeah. Uh, it didn't kill a vill, but the damage, like you say, it was done. So that's a really good start for Hidden Cup 10. And it, it's kind of shown that whenever Hidden Cup 10's had a good start, he's kept that lead so far. And that yep. could be an indication that he's looking good into game number four here. Yeah, game, number game four. four. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, the layouts of the map are pretty similar. Players have three golds in the same location of the map. Don't think that'll be a huge talking point unless we see people go on land. The players are close to the water with their TCs, almost the same exact distance. Also, they both have their berries close to the water. The blues is mm. a little bit closer. Uh, that does come into play when people go on water because they'll oftentimes skip the mill and then build the mill mid-feudal age when they start focusing more on their economy. And, and uh, that's not so easy to do if you go for water early on. I'd say this was actually quite a... Uh, even map actually yeah as as far as things go like this is really an even map yep. um both of the berries are close to the water they're both an equal distance away like it's it's looking really even but big talking point here look at that uptime yep it's a pretty significant difference actually and i, I know it doesn't look like much oh it's uh it's what 20 23 seconds whoa but that's enough time to get an advantage on the water that's all you need does it take 40 seconds for a fire to be created it's something like that yeah i think if he sends the first fire out he could probably get a fishing ship down to half health maybe yeah. before this next uh ship comes out from hidden cup seven this is why we have twitch chat guys somebody knows the exact fire is one minute see there we go see i don't even need to know things it's like no. it's like people in 2018 relying on google and wikipedia for their knowledge well as a caster i rely on my twitch chat so thanks guys <laughs> yeah, and you remember when your math teacher wouldn't let you do, uh, you know, use a calculator for your exam? Yeah. It's like, well, you're never going to have a calculator in your pocket. Well, actually, I do. Yeah, uh, screw day, you, Mrs. Day, Gordon. Like, <laughs> you, don't know, you don't know shit. 
<laughs> you don't know me. <laughs> I uh, carry a calculator. Our math teachers <laughs> probably hate the world now because they they. Oh god, this, yeah. Yeah, they're like, oh, these kids are cheating. They didn't have to go through the hell we did. So anyway, two docks now. You do need to pay close attention to the scouts. So this is where Hidden Cup Seven can maybe get some revenge. And he's unable to stop the docks from Red, though he does have his scout active, forcing Red to come off his woodline. Good activity with the scouts from both players here. Uh, three docks for red and three docks for blue, so same build orders. And they're pretty close together on water, Zach. They are, and Hidden Cup 10 just got housed. Oops, um, he's rushing up a house right now. But that's going to slow him down a little, perhaps. But yeah, the first fire galley out straight across the water. Unfortunately, it doesn't go straight for the fish, and the defensive fires will come out in time. So it's kind of close. Yeah, I think Red could have been maybe a little more fortunate with finding the fish, but all in all, like I said, it's three docks each. But Red's going to be saving wood on every building that he makes. That's going to be really helpful here. Yep. Uh, the demos are going to be so huge. Once more and more fires come out and they clump together, one demo shot can really change things. Red is just running away now, maybe tempting Blue to the left so he can push in the center. But, oh wow, uh, that demo from Blue... <laughs> He's he's gonna go for it, man. I'd love to see him get three fishing ships with the demo. That that'd be cool. That'd be that would be huge. Yeah. That would be really nice. It's, you know, when they all group around a single uh, fishing spot, just asking for it. But uh, Blue does go for some shenanigans on the right side, but he will be scouted because while well, Red was also going for some shenanigans as well, and uh, they ran into each other. So uh, yeah, uh, the power <laughs> won't go up. I didn't see that. Hey, what colors do you have? Hidden Cup Ten oh. is red for me. Yeah, same demo, yeah, demo, okay. demo. Oh, Ooh, that demo bad. was it. That was pretty good. I think it hit three of those fires. Not yeah, bad. but it, it did very little dam damage to the third, but it did yeah. hit three. So that's that's kind of what you want from your demos. Yeah. Yeah, Robo was a bit paranoid. Typical fail from Robo to get that wrong. Way to go, Robo. Can we get Robo Dan's games in the chat, please? Oh, no. Tristan. Yeah. Hidden Cup 7. Massive fail on the right side. With the he tower? Didn't delete his tower. And it got destroyed. Oh, that's so bad. He just lost all of his stone. Oh my god, that's huge, Zach. Oh, but the demo's on the front. The demo's on the front from Blue. Can he oh, make up for it? Come on, yes, look at that. He could win water with this, but now a demo comes out from Red to save his ass. And that's not the best demo ever. The transition to galleys now from Red, perhaps a bit too early. Yep. I think wow. he was more confident. <laughs> yeah, he's dead. And then it was like, oh, actually, actually, never mind. <laughs> I'm huh, not confident well, anymore. Blue has just enough stone to wall up this choke point. And water is very important, as everybody knows here. So maybe with the four fishing ship advantage, Blue will be okay. I mean, the stone might not be a huge deal in the long run. No, I mean, he can always buy some or mine some, and it's not the end of the world, I guess. But yeah. interestingly, uh, Blue is making a second mill on his deer at the back. Okay. And we don't see that from Red right now. Well, if you add up all the wood that Blue has saved, it's probably more than enough for a mill, if you compare that, right? Absolutely. So it's pretty huge, and uh, seems like he's sticking to demos and fires for now as well. I think going to galleys this early was a mistake from Hidden Cup 10. I think it was a big mistake. He, he need, You need a buffer, right? And then once you get fletching and a mass of these, then you can afford to micro them. But you give up a lot yeah. of water control if you go too early. Well, I think the key is as well, he, the fletching upgrade. He doesn't yeah. have it. And uh, you need that because that gives you a little bit more distance to play with when you're, you know, hit and running your <laughs> opponent's fire galleys. So red... <laughs> Gonna end up getting backed up here. A yeah, bit. I'm. I'm kind of laughing at this because this one demo. <laughs> Look at this thing. Is he gonna get in there? Probably not, right? But now blue missteps or miss sales, and he'll go the wrong way. I mean, right. blue hasn't convincingly won water. The uptimes to castle age will be very important, but I'd say he has a a slight lead right now. Yeah, I'd say he's going to be faster to castle as well. He's going to maybe buy some food and go yeah. up. We'll see. I mean, obviously those fish have been working for him, but he's about to lose them, I think, as red Ooh. comes in now. Oh, nice play. Blue spent so much time chasing down those galleys, he lost sight of them. Now, And red just missing out on these docks here. He doesn't know the fish are there. It's actually the second time, Zach, that red was unlucky with guessing where the fish are. 
Yeah, that's unfortunate, actually. Because those three fish are still going, and yeah. uh, he could have easily taken them out. Uh, oh, wow. The berries. Instant villager death over there. As they run away. Yeah, so that would hurt the uptime, but blue has already clicked up. And red is playing a dangerous game here because he knows blue has navy around. But maybe now he has the numbers of galleys he needs, right? Red hasn't been taking engagements and whittling down these numbers. Red has a bit of a buffer. I also noticed that Blue was idling his docks for a while as well. So I think he was falling behind in military count there because of that. And now as well, he's going to end up losing this dock on the left side. Good to see a demo coming out, though. That was Ooh. pretty solid. Pretty solid. And just look at the resources for Red or the lack thereof, man. He does not have the res. Another demo comes in. It just gets a fire ship. But blue with a faster castle age time. Lots of fires. It's looking pretty solid for him. This We could be going to game five here. Yeah, that would be really nice. But I, I think still he has to be able to take the water back quickly. Yeah. Uh, you're right, however, that red does not have enough resources to go up to the castle age. So it's going to be pretty one-sided here once blue does get castle. Yeah. Um, and then maybe, I mean, what's Red's game plan here? What is he actually thinking right now? Where, where's he gone wrong? Yeah, where's he gone wrong indeed? We don't look at their ecos on this. We're mainly looking at the fights, but whatever yeah. Blue did was much better. Maybe the extra deer. Uh, maybe the fact that he bought food earlier. I, I don't know. You see Hidden Cup 10 trying to do that now. But he's so far behind. I mean, this is light years behind. This is yeah, not crazy. normal, for sure. I mean, it's not like he lost <laughs> villagers. Yeah, and it's surprising because Hidden Cup 10 has played so well this whole series so far. Yeah. Oh, nice demos from him, though. Keeping those numbers down from Hidden Cup 7. And, uh, yeah, like I say, it seems a little uncharacteristic from Hidden Cup 10 to be this late. But, seems, yeah, he's kind we'll of whittling see. down the numbers right now. It, it'll be tough. It's, he's going to have to pay attention to his micro, but... It's possible that he could hold this. He's on his way up now. Even if he loses water, of course, it's not over. Okay, yeah, this is a lot of fires. <laughs> this could, this could is a also, lot of fires. Can we also consider that Hidden Cup 10 did galleys, and therefore he had to do fletching and a uh, blacksmith as well? Possibly. I mean, I he mean, also lost his fish much earlier, right? Yeah, that's true. I mean, Blue didn't... Blue did make a blacksmith, but he didn't spend 100 food and 50 gold on fletching, so that also adds up. Um, whoa, Hidden Cup 7, double bit axe. That is far too late. You know what? That's what it is. He saved all yeah. that food. <laughs> and, <laughs> the yeah. Double bit axe didn't, upgrade. Just didn't do any tax. <laughs> <laughs> Overrated oh, anyway. <laughs> yeah. Well, these galleys are just surrounded, man. They are surrounded. Ouch. That hurts, and I think you have to abandon water at this point, because that- Oh! Oh, that demo ship! Oh, Holy my God. shit! <laughs> Both of those demos! And you know what? Hidden Cup 10, before he even hits Damn. Castle Age, he calls the G. Those demos are like the old 1-2 right there. <laughs> Damn, that is a way to finish Perfect. a game right there. Woo! Beautiful stuff. And ladies and gentlemen, we are moving on to game 5 between Hidden Cup 7 and Hidden Cup 10. We're This is perfect because I want to do a vote. I want you guys to vote on who you think these individuals are before we start. Uh, yet again, we will have the map pack played. And players will get to pick any civilization they have not picked yet. That was outstanding. Let's look at the achievements. I, I want to see the eco. There's the KD. No surprise there. But what about the economy? You know that uh, that fight in the end, the demos? It reminded me of that Nilly's Apartment Cup game that ended with a huge demo. I shot actually, that wiped out everything. I actually don't know what game you're talking about. I was away and I didn't uh, get to okay. review all of it. But I'm sure those who saw it agree. I'm sure those who saw it agree. Uh, so I can find the little clip. Slightly more food and gold for blue, but I think it's about when you get the resources as well, not just the total. Uh, I'm excited to be going into game five here. I'm excited to have so many people here watching. Thank you, everybody, for being here and having a good time. Uh, Ethan, thank you for the 10. He said, this tournament is so much fun to watch. Well, that's good to hear, man. That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. Okay, you guys ready for your poll? Let's do this. All right, let's see what we get. Let's go for Hidden Cup number seven first, right? So that was the blue yeah. player last game. Blue player in all the games, actually. actually. they've been, yeah, I was going to say, they've played the same colors throughout, which is yep. nice. Yep, okay, so 
Guys, you'll need to type the number associated with the player on the poll into the chat. And all the names are listed there. Sorry if it's a bit small. My OBS is, is not full screen, so it might be fine for you guys. But get your votes in. You have 60 seconds. Anybody can vote. Ace John, thank you for the five, man. He said, this is so sick, man. What a concept. Thank you to Ace John for the $5 donation to myself. And thank you for the 100 bucks you put up for the prize bowl, dude. I just saw that yesterday. Thanks. Craquinho, thank you for the prime. Uh, Lernell, thank you. Thank you, everybody, for the support today. Sableton, thank you for gifting the sub to Shadow Dweller. So Doubt is currently winning. Doubt has won almost every wow. poll. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not bad going for him yeah he's a popular boy <laughs> yeah it's 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 funny how often doubt gets voted it can only be one doubt uh but what's also interesting is there's no zeros i think the lowest number is leary on five but yeah I, I think that's clearly not leary to be yeah. fair <laughs> okay so, so we have we have cool. hidden cup 10 next guys so same thing once this closes We'll vote for Hidden Cup 10. Now, I'm interested. I, I feel like this is Mr. Yo. But chat might not agree with us. Yeah, we'll see. Here we go. And lots of yo's. Lots of yo's coming out. Okay. <laughs> we might have influenced them a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I think we did. Yeah, we, we definitely influenced NBL, them. NBL, though, getting a few votes as well. Oh, and Doubt, again. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Yeah, sure. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> Doubt, Doubt can't be every player. <laughs> I, I know he's apparently our Lord and Savior, but geez, can he be everywhere at once? So, yo and Doubt. So I, I really should have been keeping track of all the results here. Maybe okay. after the tournament concludes, I can look at all the votes <laughs> afterwards. But Doubt's uh, now winning. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's just, just for the memes at this point, right? Yeah, of course. <laughs> Well, it would be pretty slick from Doubt to say G, uh, because that would have to be intentional. He does no not normally yeah, do that. Sure. He would be doing yeah. that to, to mind game a bit. So thank you guys for voting. The polls are pretty quick. It's just 60 seconds, but we had 265 votes. So thank you. It was a bit of fun. And we are going to 14 on our end here and get the next game started. Yeah, Fifth and final game here. Yep. We will see. Um, no more like sort of clear tells though from from some of the things we've noticed so far. Yeah, nothing else that seems to be very distinct. And I think it's hard anyway because I think that these players don't necessarily have things that sort of Give show that it's them every yeah. single game. Might be really subtle things, but nothing that's like concrete. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to game number five between Hidden Cup Seven and Hidden Cup Ten. According to the viewers, they are both doubt, and this is a 1v1 between doubt and doubt. <laughs> so, uh, in the red, we have Hidden Cup number 10. We don't truly know who this is. He is playing as the Magyars, and then in the blue, we have Mayans for Hidden Cup 7, who went with Malians last time, because Malians is a versatile pick, and he saved Mayans for this game. Uh, we have Scandinavia, Zach, and... I think both of these civs can fare well on Scandinavia, but I do like saving the Mayans for this game. Yeah, I mean, it, obviously they don't know what map they're going to yeah, get, yeah. Um, so it, it could be anything, but I think both these civs fairly versatile. Interesting that Magyar's here, though, as well. I mean, I think there's better civs that you could pick going into a blind map, but it'll work pretty well on Scandinavia, at least. And Mayans as well, of course. I mean, you get so many additional boar and deer that uh 15 longer lasting resources oh you've got food for days yeah so man. good food for days you know do you remember ecl 1v1 where yo would pick magyars and huns a lot yes i do just want to bring that up just uh, saying yeah just saying that yo is pretty good when it comes to magyars and huns he's pretty comfortable with that. and and why is he good it's i think his his army control is oh, it's, like impeccable it's yeah. so good like that's yeah. one of the things that just shines from mr yo it does and obviously he's, he wants to take advantage of that mobility maybe use his scouts to make scouts you need food and hidden cup seven says oh yeah i'm gonna take one of your boars here at least i believe so <laughs> because well he's i coming mean forward to lame it's always nice to have one more, but I mean, he's already got three at home. I mean, just yeah. how many ball do you need 
Um, <laughs> it's always good to have one extra, I guess. But maybe he values actually keeping his scout alive here, perhaps. Yeah, that or he's gone straight to the water, Zach. So Scandinavia, there's water on both sides. What's interesting is that blue is slightly closer to the right-hand side. And red is slightly closer to the left-hand side. And we normally do see fights just like on cross and on like Baltic for water. And oh, they're going to... Nope, red, red sees Blue's Eagle, so he knows, okay, I can't dock there, because he's here. You yeah, and now he's going to go north, I guess, and dock on the top. Yeah, because there's no boar over there, so she's not going to hunt anything. No, but she is a hunter. She is, she is a hunter, Maybe she's yes. hunting the wolf. She could be hunting the wolf. This is true. Unfortunately, <laughs> it's, uh, the wolf's it's against gonna the be religion to eat the wolf, so... Good job he just did Fletch, uh, not Fletching, I mean Loom there. Uh, oh, what, what's... But, uh, he's Magus! I know! <laughs> <laughs> That's gotta be Havoc right is, there. He is <laughs> hunting the wolf. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I guess it makes sense to research Loom when you run out because your opponent has yeah. the eagle, but he just saw that the eagle was more towards the west. So that's got to be habit for him to get Loom there. I guarantee to you that he forgot about the Magus bonus yeah. just like we did. Yeah, for sure. Guarantee. Sorry, Mr. Yo, this is not wolf nothing. You don't need loom. You don't need loom as Magyars on this map. Now, blue is docking hit, the though. same side. Yeah. It's not like you I can said, just man. defeat infinite wolves. <laughs> like, it's, you know, after 10 wolves, you're going to die. Like, that's yeah. a fact. So yeah. even with the Magyars, you're not invincible. Well, that means they've docked the same side, which is really interesting because I pointed yes. out how I thought they'd be on opposite sides. I thought blue would be on the right and it would be the left for for red uh so probably unintentionally blue has forced his opponent to his side maybe he's thinking of that now what i'm thinking of zach is just how do you play this as mayans when you're smack in the middle of the map you got a wall i guess because yeah. you can't you can't Pretty do anything much. else you can't keep up with scouts yeah exactly i mean that's your big problem in the feudal age i mean you can make bunch of spears and try and defend but that's not necessarily going to work out too well for you either so yeah. walling up gives you that peace of mind he could then maybe focus on winning the water and then you know we'll see what happens after that i mean he could think about transitioning to the castle age comfortably depends how his walling goes but we are going to see hidden cup 10 going up nice and fast and we're probably going to see scouts coming out will he get walled up in time possibly i think he even might yeah i think He's walled early enough. He might be able to. Got to keep in mind that Red will have more than one scout, and he also gets the extra attack. We've seen it quite a few holes. Uh, players were not scouting or just not looking for holes, and they got caught out, but not here. This is game five, the best of five. This has been the best best of five in this tournament so far. Yeah, he should be able to plug the gap here. And then Red, I mean, what do you do? I guess you, you will be able to go on water a bit with a fire and maybe I kill think you, fish. Yeah, I think you win the water and then you try and transition to castle as well. Um, problem for him is that he doesn't have such an easy wall off. Yeah. yeah I mean, he could do it, but God, it's going to be a lot of walls. So could be quite interesting here. I think blue will fast castle. I mean, he absolutely has to at this point. 26 um, villagers and five fish. He's only just moving over to the deer. He's got so much food, like I say from all this extra hunt, that a fast castle should be very comfortable. And Mayans, they have those plumed archers. Hidden Cup 7 is on stone already. This is a style we saw a lot in ECL 1v1 on Scandi, and three villagers on stone. He's even chosen the back gold here. So he walled yeah. using his main gold. He's gone to the back gold. Really smart thinking from Hidden Cup 7. I'm yeah, in fact, the even style. his other gold is in the wall as well, so he, he yeah. doesn't really have a, a choice there. But yeah, you're right. I mean, by the time Red even sees this, I mean, this is crazy, right? His scout is over there, and yeah. he sees a wall, but he doesn't know that it's fully walled yet. And he's going to send the first scout over and have another scout queued up, and it, it, there's no way in. One advantage he can take is on water. So I think it's important that with this faster feudal time, he hits Hidden Cup's fish. Hidden Cup has... Oh, Hidden Cup's fish. They're both Hidden Cup. <laughs> we'll just call him Red and Blue. He got to <laughs> hit Blue's fish. And he's on his way now. But Blue might hit Feudal Age around that time. 
And also you can take advantage of fishing on the other side. So that's exactly what Red is doing. I like this. Yeah, that's smart. But yeah. I think he still has to be careful now because there's going to be quite a difference in the castle time. Yeah. And Red's kind of wide open. So he's going to kind of figure out how to defend himself from early plumes. But yeah, I mean, right now the fire is over there and I think he'll probably end up killing all of those fish at this rate. By the time Blue makes the fire ship, I think Red could just double down and kill all of them. Well, it's, it's a bit deceiving because the fishing ships die so slowly now. But I think at least half of them will die. Blue has actually positioned his other fishing ships nicely oh, on the other side. Yeah, my bad. Sorry, I was just looking. I was like, he only has three, but no, yeah, he actually yeah. does have more. So yeah, yeah that's okay. Split them up. That was pretty good. It takes a while for the fish to really pay off, I think. So Hidden Cup 7, he is still in a nice spot. He's on his way to Castle Age, man. I mean, he has the deer for food. He doesn't need any farms. He'll get the plumes. Can Red do anything? He didn't go forward. This is He's not good. Trying to break through the wall, and Hidden Cup 7 is just sitting there with that villager waiting to wall behind it. It's no problem. Yeah, it's fine, man. It's all this... good, and Castle Age is in, and, you know, the castle will come up, and then plumes are coming out, and what's Red going to do? Well, he has to go castle, and at the moment, you know, I, I feel like if he wants to go castle faster, I think the answer is not add more fish. Mm, maybe. I think and I'll tell you why. He's stonewall here, though, Zach. I'm surprised he hasn't stonewalled yeah. at all. But I go think ahead. so too. Well, because you have to spend you have to first of all gather wood to then train a fishing ship, which then takes time to regather the food. So it's much better to maybe saturate your deer a little bit more. Yeah. Spend the time on walling up and then, you know, try and get the castle faster. Like, build some farms instead of building the fish at this point. Because then, you you know, you've got to invest the wood into the dock. That takes time. And then you spend more wood on a fishing ship. And, yeah. I just I mean, think that adding more farms and taking the deer faster would have been the trick. Or you could send a few extra villagers to gold and buy. Yeah, that's true. And if you're that's really true. desperate... You could actually, he's building a market now. If you're really desperate, you could sell some stone. Like now he sees blues in Castle Age. He's probably thinking, oh shit, like this is bad. Yeah. And he might consider buying and selling a little bit with that. Uh, but yeah, is, selling is, wood, buying food, yeah, just like that. Yeah. So he's, he's on his way up now. Question is, will he be okay? To be honest, Zach, the castle's on its way up now from blue, and blue can probably add TCs behind to this, but it's not like red will die when the plume darches arrive. He can make a few knights. Walls, while they can be frustrating, they really have a way of balancing the game. Blue walled up. It was an investment. It's given himself time, but he gave up a lot, right? He gave up the water. And then, and then red, he could be stonewalling now if he wants. He could be walling up because he has all the time. So without yeah. that option, it might be more difficult. But I think... He should take it, and he's doing it now. He's stonewalling up. I like it. Well, I mean, he gave up the water, but he still hasn't killed the fish. And he's made quite a lot more boats as well. So it's kind of interesting, to be yeah. honest, that he's not won the water. I think that's something that he's sort of slacked on a little bit. Yeah, and credit to Blue for defending. He's done a great job. Normally, you invest most of your resources into that uptime. He's compensated a bit, and he still hasn't lost those four fish in that right-hand corner. Yeah, that's huge. And although, yes, Blue does have four fish and Red has 13 now, um, yeah, he, he's kept them alive, and that's important. But the plumes are coming out and heading across the map. Red stonewalling up. I think he left it dangerously late, but he, it's yeah. calculated. It's calculated. It's, it's closed, and that's the important thing here. Red also picked off a villager from Blue that was going to the shoreline in the south. So he stopped Blue from getting access to that area of the water. So economically, Red's actually ahead at the moment. But Mayans, when they build TCs behind this, they're so good, man. You, you stick with one castle until you're at about 70, 80 pop. Then you'll have resources for another castle in the center. That, that plumed archer snowball can be so strong. Yeah, it's about getting the mass, right? I mean, yeah. it's the same with crossbows versus knights, only plumed archers are stronger and better. So, uh, yeah, I mean, the fact that he has the castle there as well, it's protecting that gold. It's going to allow him to start locking down more areas of the map. And he'll keep taking stone as well. He'll probably try and castle up near 
the main gold a little bit later on as well once he starts to increase his plumed archer production oh, so red again is picking off the vilzak that's such a clutch play oh. On the left, wow, nice. he stopped two villagers now. Blue knows how important it is to hit Red's water, and Red is denying that. That's clutch stuff from him, man. That's twice. Yeah, absolutely. That's really good. Uh, and at the moment, he doesn't have Bodkin Arrow, so he can't really fight these knights too easily. Mm -hmm. He needs more numbers. He needs more um, upgrades. And I think Red is in an okay position, actually. The third TC is coming up. He's got more knights coming out, and... He can, well, I guess he can not really fight necessarily, but he can run around and pressure the walls and keep Blue, like, sort of defending. Yeah, and Blue's doing that, man, and he's not going to be able to stop these knights from coming in in the north. Look at the transport from Red. That's oh, what the he... water control nice. gives you. Unfortunately, he attacked that house, but maybe the attack signal, maybe Blue thinks the attack signal was because of the fire ship or something, because... Yeah, he hasn't reacted to this. He has not reacted to this. Magyar Knights coming in. They could hit the wood line. All oh, the quick walls from Blue. All right. That was well good. done. That was good. <laughs> yeah, that was really fast. Well done. Uh, but he could still come down and hit the gold, actually. he Well, he, you know, whatever he does at this point, he might even get cleaned up by the plumed archers. Yeah. It was a good play. And he did that at the same time as attacking the wall in the south. So it was a distraction tactic as well. Yeah, and, and again, as you said, this, this draws blue back and this has given red time to secure his own base a little bit more and he really has he's walled but he has a lot of exposed resources but that hasn't been an issue for him yeah now we have this interesting situation where red's actually ahead in town centers and villages yeah he's ahead in fish and even though the mayans are fantastic they are starting to fall behind a little bit here yeah but blue finally gets his dock <laughs> up you know, that comes down to Red just not patrolling that night. And Blue saw it. Blue's going to try and convert it. And Red will then have to defend on water. And Blue has to defend on land again. Because yep. another batch another of knights landing. are coming in on the transport. <laughs> this is a cool game. Yeah, it's really cool. I, I really think Scandinavia is a map which needs to see more competitive play, actually. Yep. We saw it in the ECL first stage. But before that, I mean, it was it's not a map that you see all that often in tournaments. But I think it's so great. And whoa, Blue's coming forward. This is going to be just two TCs from him. Yep, and he's two, going forward for another castle, I guess. Two TCs. Round 70 to 80 pop. Second castle. Red has just been avoiding the plumed archers. He's really not in a position to fight them yet. And that castle is going to be so clutch. And there's nothing Red can do about it. You can see he's prepping to make more knights or maybe go up to Imp. But that is going to really push him back, man. He's going to run out of places to get wood soon. Absolutely, and right now, seeing those knights unable to do any eco damage at the moment, they might find villagers on the stone there, but the gold miners get walled in, and that castle, it, it's surely going up, but that's going to be, yeah. well, that's going to be annoying. I mean, that's going to deny a lot of economy from uh, Red Player. And Red is in with the knights, not finding any pickoffs. Blue has done a heck of a job to keep his vills walled in. This is not easy. And that forward castle is going to be really strong. Now, it is shaping up like Hidden 7 will hit the Imperial Age later than Red. So I think Red could imp faster because of the extra economy. But can he get through the walls? Not really. Can he push back that castle? Not really. So he needs to find some options. Yeah, and his stone's just been denied. The stone in the north, the, the villagers are gathering there, but it's so easy for our blue player to just go up there and immediately yeah. snipe vills. On the water, by the way, that uh, dock's starting to pay off now as he picks off some fish. Wow. Oh, and Red's Nicely distracted. Done. He just went to the dock. He doesn't realize that he's losing the fishing ships. This is looking much better for our blue player. Another kind of funny sloppy thing is that uh, Hidden Cup 7 has a fire ship next to the transport, but, you know, just sitting there <laughs> watching each other. Yeah. <laughs> hey, bro, what's yeah, up? <laughs> they're, they're, he's going to wait, man. He's going to wait until oh, he's in. get in he's there. In. He's in. The he's, are in. He's killed five villagers, and Red has Maganel. This Maganel is so needed. Does Blue see the Siege Workshop? He does. What's his micro going to be like here? He also Maganel on the hill, by the way. If he gets hill. it on the hill, oh, that's yeah, huge. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If he runs that direction. Well, the Vil counts, the Fish counts are evening out a little bit. And a forward Siege Workshop from Blue. He's really chosen the right area to pressure. Again, Red's walls did not secure this gold. These plumes are doing so well. Red has to leave his stone again, Zach. So he, if he goes to Imp, will not have a castle to make trebs. 
Yeah, and you know he's walled in behind, which is pretty smart, just so that these plumes can't chase his villas and kill them all off. But the fact that he doesn't have a castle or a means to get one right now is a yeah. big problem. Needs more siege, but you know, Magyars aren't really that great in the siege department. Man, you could just tell looking at Red's resources, he wanted to go to Imp. He had 600 food, 600 gold, yeah. <laughs> and everything is just falling apart now. He's building a tower on the gold. The Plume Doctors from Hidden 7 playing so well, getting lots of pickoffs, so they are going to be trapped here. This is going to be big. <laughs> this is perfect. This is perfect. The yeah. Maganels are closing in. Oh, the Maganels. Oh, they're not even needed, man. Magyar Knights, they'll do the rest of the job, but boom, one final shot. And the Plumes die. Question is, is that enough? Because Blue yeah, has more villagers. <laughs> yeah, he has more villagers. He still has map control, right? So I don't think he'll be complaining too much after doing so much damage. Couple of conversions in the south as he raids the gold there, but uh, eventually he'll get pushed back. He'll take the two monks down, but that's yeah. favorable for Blue. Red does actually build a TC up in the north as well. Um, has a TC there, so he's expanding outside of his walls, which is pretty smart in this situation. You don't want to get penned in. Um, but yeah, his Imperial time suffering, but it was a necessary step if you wanted to survive that Plumed Archer raiding. Correct, and Zach, he can build another castle now, and I think... That's going to go forward. It's going to go forward. It's it not going to go on the gold on the right. It's going to go right in front of the castle he already has up. Double down. Why not? This this is quite dangerous. Oh, uh, he's deleted it. Yeah, this is quite dangerous. Uh, the villagers are running in. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe send those guys back. <laughs> uh, and Red sees that as well. He probably knows. Uh, that's oh. way too greedy. I think he should put it on the hill on the right on the if hill. he can. He has I to don't know if he can get first. one there. Yeah. The Vils pathed the wrong way, so he's lost some of them. Oh. Just pathing. Just pathing, yeah. <laughs> of course. Oh, he raised the stone as well. That's super nice. And uh, like I say, Hidden Cup 7, uh, sorry, Hidden Cup 10 cannot get enough stone for a castle, but he can click up to Imp now, which he has done. Red is on the ropes, man. He really is. He's clicked up to Imp. But he doesn't have access to any of his stones to build a castle. He needs trebuchets to push back the castles from blue. And blue will probably build that castle right where we expected it on the hill. And there it is. And he's on the way to Imp right behind him. And he has a lot more military units. And he has that big ball of plumes. Wow. This is really tense for our Hidden Cup 10 player. Like, he is got his back against the wall. It's going to be tough. I mean, he needs to do Cavalier quickly, but it's so hard to take a good fight versus these plumed archers, man. Like, they don't even need to be elite. He just needs to get um, uh, Bracer and, and Chemistry, and yep. they pack so much of a punch. They're pretty tanky on top of that. And, uh, I mean, the only kind of hope, I guess, is that, you know, he's still got that TC out on the east side, so that's kind of working away right now. Yeah. But the issue is... With the Mayans, you've got to kill their castles. Otherwise, yeah. they just keep making plumes. And he is getting a castle now. He had to purchase some of that stone. So maybe with Trebs, it's just that blue is right behind him with the Imperial Age time. Red's losing so many vills, man. He's losing more on the lumber now. Yeah, he, he's very fortunate that he's not been found on this east side. But there you go. A fire galley from Hidden Cup 7 will spot that TC over there. Ah. And that could be a good target for Hidden Cup 7 to take very soon. Cavalier immediately coming in, like I say. Plus 4 defense and a treb. But yeah. it's one castle versus three. It yep. doesn't, doesn't seem to end well when it's that one-sided in castle numbers. And a ton of choke points, man. These plumed archers, they can stack on top of each other, sit between the wood line and the siege workshop, or the gold and the castle. There's so many good areas and that yeah. hill for these plumed archers to sit. And there's nothing saying that he can't garrison in the castle and ungarrison on the other side. He can just go back and forth. <laughs> so it has yeah, to be now absolutely. for Hidden Cup 10. Like He has to get Cavalier, kill the castles, kill the plumes, something, before the upgrades come in. And Can he he's... do it? He's got 33 military. He's still yeah. got a couple of mangonels as well. So if the cavalier charge, the mangonels sort of catch the plumed arc, the archers. Um, could be huge, but he's moving forward now. Cavalier's in, timing that nicely. Oh, but he Pog just can't Chip. get in. This oh. is huge. The plumes will be in the perfect position. This is exactly Damn. what I said. Now the mangonels can approach because of the castle. And Hidden Cup 10. He, he loses out on his window, and now Elite Plumed Archer's coming in. Chemistry's about to complete. Ring Archer Armor, these are the upgrades you need when you're going Plumes. So it gets more and more difficult for Red, but 
Jeez, Blue, watch out. Those Mackinels are so close to hitting the Plumed Archers. Freaking me out sometimes. <laughs> Whew. He did actually take down the castle in the south, by the way. So yeah. even Cup 7 loses a castle. But yeah, I mean, like I said, the, the Plumed Archer as well. Let's not forget it. its speed. That's yeah. such a huge value, the speed. Like the fact that it can like outmaneuver the, the Cavalier is so huge. If that had been Arbalest, he would have lost most of them, I think, because the Cavalier would have got in among them and killed them. And despite having just one castle, I keep wanting to say Mr. Yo out of habit, because I'm pretty sure Red is Mr. Yo, but whoever this guy is, he's he's has the Treb advantage. Yeah, which shouldn't happen, really. It, it shouldn't happen. I think what Hidden Cup did, I, I keep saying that, I'm sorry, what Blue did <laughs> is he went for the uh, Conscription upgrade and Elite Plumed Archer, so he opted yeah. for no Trebs. Which is now costing him, actually, quite yeah. dearly. As he loses, uh, what I imagine will be a second castle in just a second. And he... Oh, he must have lost his conscription upgrade earlier as well! Wow! Oh, no! And the cavaliers surrounding the Oh, booms. no! Wow! Now the castle is gone, they can just charge it! Unbelievable! And the beautiful positioning from the cavalier, though. Can they get in front of the plumed archers here before they go through? I think they can. Or oh, they're getting in that engagement's so perfect. big! That's amazing! Wow. What a comeback here. Two castles down from blue. Cavalier just everywhere. And now is when you start thinking about maybe some skirmishers in the mix if you're red. And blue, as he builds another castle and falls back to his hill, he can consider going with halberdiers. Seriously? I, I, blue is... I feel he's thrown that quite heavily yeah. there. Yeah. I, I think maybe, you know... It, it's hard to say though, right? I mean, he does need to upgrade his plumed archers, but at the same time, he cannot lose the treb war. Yeah. Like, what's more important as the Mayans? Keeping your castles alive or having upgrades on your plumes? Well, Zach, I think that keeping the castles alive leads to more plumes in the long run, exactly. right? So you gotta keep right. the castles alive. But at the same time, he was very hesitant with fighting with his plumed archers. You, you mentioned the mobility. He had a minute there where he could have ran in and ran back and... Oh my god! Now he gets trapped by the cavalier again! They're surrounded on the hill! Oh my goodness! This is before yeah. the pikeman arrives, Zach. Yeah, and this is before paladin as well. I don't know if we're gonna see it, but it should be... A consideration for our red player as well. Wow. Um, he's actually going to do Cavalier Paladin in just a second. So that's going to be a huge, huge power spike for him as well. Wow. Paladin's coming in now. Who there needs Skirmisher when you can get all your golds back, get Paladin. These poor wow. plumes, man. 150 kills for red, 100 deaths, and all he needs is his treps. His treps from back what? home need to come forward. I, I think what saved him was literally that TC on the east side. Oh, he was taking he was taking gold, he was taking food and yeah. whoa, okay. He did lose uh, nearly lose Trebs there. I, I saw I know I saw that I freaked yeah. out. <laughs> <laughs> I, I knew immediately when you were like, oh god, I was like, yeah, that's the Trebs. <laughs> but you're right, I think that that extra gold, just scouting to know what was there is helpful. And Zach, now he can use his mobility. Before he couldn't use his mobility. He hit on the left, but look, he's on the right now. He's killed villagers on that gold. He's in the wood line he couldn't get into earlier. He's killing TCs. Let's see if he can save his trebs and kill this castle, but good man, god, man. He could really push his home. What a fantastic comeback. I mean, if we knew someone could do a comeback this tournament, we knew it would be Hidden Cup 10. You know, <laughs> he's got this track record for doing these amazing comebacks. Yeah, man. What a player. Seriously. Yeah. We Incredible. just knew it would be Hidden Cup 10. I do think that Blue's in a fortunate position where he has his, this small hill here. He also has pikemen and plumes, and the plumes are fully upgraded. So there is still potential. Yes. I like the combo better. I like plumes and pikes better as time goes on. It's just that he's lost a lot of momentum. Can he save his castle here? He's in a nice little spot with these yeah. plumes, though. I like that. But uh, he won't save the castle, I don't think. Yeah, I don't think so. Oh, he... villagers coming over to fight the trebs! <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got to love it. You gotta love it. Uh, nice if he uses his now. plumes to attack that one treb, he might be able oh. to keep this up. Or the converted paladin oh. gets it. Wow! So the castle stays up for now. Red's paladins aren't offering much at the moment because they're just running in one by one here. There's one yeah, more treb. Cool. He needs an answer to that. <laughs> he needs to get another monk to get a conversion. Oh no, he's out of stone as well. No more Oof. repairs. 
and the Treb, the Treb has other plans. No! <laughs> it, the Treb has gone rogue! What are you doing, Trebuchet? Oh my god! We'll Take come down, down to that, man. <laughs> you, may, you know, I think that was intentional because he wanted to open space for his yes, paladin. Yes. Yeah. Um, but still. Which, yeah, he still needs to get a few more together, I think, who he can run through. Yeah. And Blue has 50 villagers, <laughs> but it is Mayans, man. He just needs a military. A red, oh, red hit. Look on the, the bottom side. Look at that. Look at those bodies there. Ooh, yeah. Oof. He's finding raiding damage as well. Yeah. And that that's like a distraction as well. Something that just kind of gets into the, the mind of Hidden Cup 7. For sure. He's thinking like, ah, oh, he's raiding me again. I got to deal with that. Like, ah, uh, you, you only have so much time in a real time strategy to do everything you want to do. And when you're getting raided, well, whoa, hold <laughs> up, hold up. The, the, the G, G from the Hidden Cup 7. <laughs> so he, he turns the tables. In game five, he sends the G to Hidden it's Cup 10. Swapped. It has swapped. And Hidden Cup 10, who I think mm. was a better player in, in game one. Like in game one, I would have probably predicted that this red player would have won. He loses. What an amazing comeback. Hidden Cup 10 was up three to one. He, he or sorry, uh, two to one. He yeah. loses the best of five, three to two. What a best of five series, man. That was sick. That was really sick. nice last game as well. Really nice last game. But um, I mean, I, I'm starting to think, you know, Hidden Cup 10 said GG in the last game. Yeah. Which could betray the fact that the G was just, um, you know, trying to mislead us and mislead his opponent. Yep. And then he showed his true self in the end there in his excitement to win the series. I don't know what to think. All of our votes could have been wrong, guys. Who knows? Who knows? But what a fantastic match there. I can't yeah. wait to find out Sunday afternoon exactly who all these <laughs> players were. But does it even matter, man? Like, sure. No. <laughs> like, like, sure, it's nice to know sometimes. But in this Hidden Cup, the games have been incredible. It doesn't affect the quality of the games. Uh, super cool. I thought Red was dead there. Red step, baby. Well, he wasn't actually. Uh, he he did a really good job to to <laughs> yeah. come back. I, I mean, it, it's as much as a red comeback as it is as a blue throw, a bit, in my yeah. opinion. A bit. Like yeah. I think blue could have. I think he had him in a good position. I think maybe um, an option could have been to kill that economy in the east, which was just sitting there completely unprotected. I think yeah. blue could have gone over there and cleaned that up and been, you know, well, twenty villages ahead at that point. So that could I have think... worked. Well, it's yeah. hard to say. Also, remember, I was I said that it was worth it to lose those plumed archers, but he could have quite easily gone back to his castles with those 20 plumes he lost in Castle Age. Maybe it just came down to utilizing the plumes, whether that's putting them in the right positions or just having the numbers. But even still, after he lost those plumes, I thought for sure that Blue, with two castles there, would finish off Red. And in the end, Red's mm. castle stands. It hasn't even been scratched. And he had Paladin and won the game. Whew, crazy yeah. game there. Crazy. It game. is crazy. It's crazy because he only made a single castle yeah. and he beat someone who had four or five. Yep. Like, that's just... That shouldn't happen, really, should it? Well, guys... It, Age of Empires is very much a game about hills and trebs yeah. in the late game. <laughs> and, and credit to Red again for prioritizing the extra gold. Because... Without that extra gold, he would have never had the resources to fund Paladin because of this forward one being castled. There's so many different things. It's one of those games that we could break down into segments and analyze. Uh, we do not have the time for that, of course, because no. we have another best of five coming up. But, whew, man, I'm, I'm pumped going into this last best of five. Yeah, me too. Fantastic games so far, really. Uh, enjoyable stuff. And, well, we'll see in game, oh, sorry, in the next best of five if we can get any more sort of ideas about who could be playing. I mean, we haven't seen a lot of gates yet, which indicates that perhaps we haven't seen Viper or Slam. Yeah, this uh, is true. We haven't seen any sort of spectacular fails, which indicates that we're not, we haven't seen Doubt yet. Um, yeah. you know, we, we, <laughs> Poor we, Doubt, we, we man. <laughs> Doubt's, probably, like, Doubt's probably, probably has this up on his TV right now. Like, man, He's I wonder if... It. <laughs> yeah, I wonder if I can figure this out. He probably has a beer and some pizza, and we keep dissing him. <laughs> We're like, he oh, we haven't seen there. any, we haven't seen <laughs> any fails, so it must not be doubt. He's probably like, what the hell? <laughs> uh, guys, if you look on your screen now, you can see the brackets. So again, all players are hidden to us until the end of the tournament, which will be Sunday afternoon.